Welcome into the Camister Podcast, episode number 244, presented by Hair Club, baby. Hey, 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 let's go. It's Saturday, by the way, just so all y'all out there know that uh, we, we Andy's going out of town, Brody's going out of town, so we got we to gotta do this, uh, we got to do this today on a Saturday, so if shit goes down in the next couple of days when we, we post this on Tuesday. Sorry about that. Sorry. We're sorry about that. Sorry, we'll have to. We just got to do what we got to do. We'll have to pick up on that next week. Yeah. I'm a little tired today. I'm not going to lie. You know, for uh, several months there, I was having trouble sleeping. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Uh, I was just not sleeping very well. Happens to everybody, Andy. No one feels sorry for you. No, 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 no. I was waking up very early in the morning and not falling back asleep. And then all of a sudden, Cam, over the course of the last week or so, I am just sleeping like a baby. Because of a golf game? Andy came out, I told you guys, and we didn't even post it. Andy posted a stupid video of me, of course. I, 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 I look like I, such an idiot. I probably had fine. 20 different options. I know, I know, and I gave him the Just green be happy light. that I posted that well, one. Well, be happy that I'm, I, I don't post things of, of you. Just just so you know. I got a couple in the, in the bank right now. I'm waiting for a rainy day, but I look like a jackass. And you, and, and you know what? Like, I had a good time with you, man. I truly did. But to start off, I was, like, rattled. You know, I set this thing up. Like, I want to make everything good for him, man. I want to make sure he's got food, what kind of drinks. He's very picky. His cigars. You got to need balls? Okay, we'll get balls. So I'm like, you got to be here at this time, man. I want to go up there. Let's let's, let's hit some balls. Let's relax. Let's get our cart. Let's set up the sink so we could jam out to some music so we're not just rushing. Pick out your cigars that you want. Andy shows up 45 minutes late. No, I didn't. What? No, I didn't. How late were you? The tea time was 1230. I was there by 1150. I told you to be there at 11.30. You showed up right. at 12.15. Yeah, I got caught a little bit. You showed bit, up at 1250. No, wait, just wait. 12.15. I, mean, I had my no, interview started at 12. Okay, so you're at 11.50 yeah. and we had a hurry? Okay, yeah. so so he's late. And I'm already rattled. And like when, when it comes to this kind of stuff, you know, you, again, you guys know, like you, you want to be there on time. So A, he's late and I'm waiting for him. Like, where you at? Where you at? I'm five minutes. Well, that's 10 minutes, of course. And then we get there. I'm like, okay, what do you need, man? Like, you want cigars? He's like, I do my interview. But you can't like... You can't walk around the course doing interviews and talking on the phone, so we got to kind of wait. I got to take a piss. I'm already rattled. So we get out there. We say, I, I hook him up. What, what do you need? Bloody Mary, boom. Uh, uh, cigars, boom. We got beer. We got we did everything we need. We get on the course, and, like, Andy's scrambling. Like, he hasn't settled in yet. Where's my ball? Well, it's over there. No, I think it's this way. No, no, no. <laughs> it's over here, Andy. Where do I go? Hey, let me get the cart. Goes in the rough. Beep, beep, beep. Nope, can't, can't drive in the rough, Andy. Get, get it out of there. Get it out of there. This, that, and the other. Scrambly as hell. I'm playing like shit. He's playing like shit. No. No, we're both playing kind of good at the beginning. No, 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 no. You, you, you were never playing good, just so you know. I mean, for, for a guy who I hear that golfs all the time, I, we'll I get do it, golf We'll, we'll get time. into that. But I was hitting you were, some you were damn good. shots. Oh. I was like, what is... I had a shot that was... Uh, I forgot my viewfinder, what it told me, how many... Uh, it's probably the 40 yards, yards. I were. No, yards. I was like, and I was like, in a, remember I was in that little, I was in that rough. You did. And I came out of it, just launched it yeah. right in the middle you, of the you fairway. Dude, you, you did good yeah. on that. Yeah. Andy was actually surprised. Like, like he looks kind of goofy hitting the ball, just like I did. I, but he would like tee up. He would tee it up with a nine iron. I go, no, don't. I wouldn't do that. Never used a nine iron. Yeah, you did. Or uh, a seven. But I you tee it up. Yeah, you would tee it up. <laughs> and then like, you know, just like little things like that. His cigars fall out. I gotta stop and we gotta wait. Just, <laughs> like just just like a twelve year old. Like I but then but Andy was hitting it pretty good. And I was like, surprising. Not far, but pr- pretty good. But then you settled in, you got your mind right a little bit, and you chilled out, and we had a gosh dang good time, man. I had a yeah. good time with you. We stayed all day. Hung out, and then we went and smoked cigars up at the clubhouse. Said, hey, some people. Hung out with my neighbor, yeah. Wes, who's a hockey guy. But did you have a good time? Like, did you Listen, have a good time? I had a great time. Yeah. You liked the course and all that stuff? Love the course. Right. Yeah. Love the, the course. The people are cool. You it's, know? It takes me a little bit of time to get out there. I know. I was worried about you a little bit. But you, Andy was crushing water, sobering up a little bit. But uh, Can I just say this about golf once again? I'll say yeah. it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's too long. I don't get the golfers, man. I just can't get the golfers that play every single day. That, that it's, it's If you don't drink, listen, if you don't, I, I lose it too. Because I'm drinking and smoking and blah. You know, like I just, you just lose focus and you just want to jam out and cruise. But it's so beautiful. Dude, you're away from the kids. You're hanging out with me and my buddy, a couple of my buddies who are our age that live right there. Everybody's cool. Like you just kicked your feet up and you jammed out. Yeah. Like, and isn't that nice? Oh. God. So I like that part. Yeah, dude. But, it's, but, I mean, it's a, playing 18, and listen, I'd hit balls. 
Cam Cam was like such a control freak with the golf cart. I I should have been driving the golf cart all. To, you don't know what you're to, doing to begin with. You you know okay? you, you're driving like up to the green, and I'm like, no, no, dude. <laughs> they have the uh, and by the way, it's like the biggest tournament going. It's a member guest. Yes, yeah, so all the big they, dogs were out. Oh, like, yes. looking at the course. Yes, the oh yeah, the club pros. Yeah, like, like turn your head around. No, yeah. No, Andy, there's rules, man. You can't be like <laughs> I a... I know, you're like, right. You're, you're a Ledoux Hoosier, dude. Well, like, you can't I'm, be... Hey, listen. That's a poor part of Ledoux seeping out of you in a nice area. You got to remember that. Andy wants to go sign up and all these different things. You can't have your hat on backwards. I didn't. You can't though. fucking talk on the phone. I had my shirt you, untucked, you, you, though. Yeah, that's okay. I, it's it's fine. But, like, it's like, I got to, like, I got to evaluate Andy so we don't get embarrassed. But it, it, you were fine. Dude. Okay, a couple of things. First <laughs> off, you were very generous. Course, like Always. I gotta be honest. If I if I was a member of the course, I don't even know if I would do that for you. I mean, I don't even know if I, I know would. You would but I that's mean, what I do. For I people. mean, that is amazing that you open up your yeah. course to us. Well, yeah. Um, that's what you, that's although I I, I gave you a cigar to keep. Did you bring that with you today? I don't smoke cigars, oh. man. Too much. So I although gave, I did watch the uh, documentary on Arnold, and every time he's smoking a cigar, I kind of want. You kind of want now. one. That's how I am when I see Michael Jordan. Yeah, was Michael my, Jordan. Yes. yes. And you know, why do you think cigar? Uh, Sales rose out the wazoo After because of MJ. Well, MJ and Arnold, those two guys. That and dude from uh, AJ Hawk from uh, McAfee. He smokes a lot. He's too. smoking a cigar every day. Yeah. That can't be good for you to smoke oh, every day, God. right? Yeah, and there's other things. Smoking right. darts is probably way worse. He's not inhaling, um, but it's not good for your teeth. Cam inhaled. I saw Cam have a yeah. cigar. He's like inhaling it, to. like he's like smoking a cigar. No, I'm like, dude, you probably shouldn't do smoking that. Smoking a doobie. But Cam's just like an animal. This guy. I know. No, okay, so let me give you my uh, impression of everything. So, yeah, it was great, and I appreciate that. Um, I did put a shot up of yours. Oh, I think I got like 10,000 views on my know. Instagram story. Funny it, how it's, when you it's post gone, me. It's gone viral. I've had uh, talk shows from all across North America and the globe. Invite me out to come, like, talk about it because they're showing the video on every show. It was. I was shocked at how bad you were playing. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't want to chirp your game it's too okay. badly. But I, I was shocked because the way you talk it up and how often you I play. I don't brag about Not yeah. bragging. Yeah. But you play a I lot. Love. I play with my wife. And like, I'm not. I don't believe that you've ever really kept score the entire time. There's no way. Um, Here's what Cam would do. I would hit the ball. He would not stop for my ball. He would just keep driving. And I'd be like, dude, we got to go back and get my ball. He's like, I don't know where it is. So I kept losing balls. I went through like 45 balls okay. because Cam would not drive me to my ball because Andy would hit he's it 30, in charge of the car of the car. Well, you hit it 30 yards in somebody's backyard. I'm not getting it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, like you I was even, still way better than you. Like, don't get me wrong. You wouldn't even go over there and get it. No, because like Andy's annoying. Like he'll hit it and he'll look for it. And then he'll be like, uh, where's the other one? And I'm like, no, we got to let's, let's keep going, man. We're going to play 18. Like. You gotta keep a pace here. Although no one was behind us, are you looking forward to the NHL draft, Cam? I am. I am. Who's who do you have going third? Oh, Leo probably. The Loof. Leo Loof. Mm -hmm. Leo Loof was drafted oh, yeah, a couple the, by years the, ago uh, by Leo, the Blues. Leo uh, uh, Carlson. Carlson. My best. Yeah, Loofy was uh, the one yeah. from the Carlson. Listen, the top five are supposed to be game changers. The rest, uh, probably up to ten, where the Blues are going to pick, are probably going to be pretty damn good. Probably not ready yet, and everything else is going to be a crapshoot. But I hear, and I don't know because I don't watch these guys consistently. Mm -hmm. Andy knows a lot more about this than I do. But I hear the top five picks. However, maybe way you pick, maybe we're even be, more than that. Maybe the seven. So One there's a lot. Of, I, here's what I'm. Uh -huh. I'm you're going to be down there. Andy's going down to the draft, hanging out with all the Blues fucking hierarchy. Taking the wife down there, which is really cool. Nashville's such an awesome town. If you've never been there, all you guys up in Canada and stuff. But I, I am curious to see what teams are going to do. There's mm -hmm. so many good players in this draft, mm -hmm. supposedly, that I want to. Hopefully, there's crazy stuff that goes on. Guys tie in other first rounders. They move up. They move down. They yes. they put it. You know, they tie in a guy that's overpaid. Like I want craziness to happen, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to. Yeah, I don't know. We say that every year, so I, I hope sometimes you're it right. does. Sometimes it does. Look at look at it. Look at even the trade. Look at the uh, trade deadline last year. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I know, but so many trades were it. happening prior to the trade deadline, which is why I wonder if we're going to see more movement prior to day one of the draft this year. Okay. So a lot of the general managers are getting into Nashville on Sunday, so that would be a couple of days ago. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're, so, we're sad. we got to tell them. So, so we yeah. don't know. Listen, if there's deals that go down on, uh, on Sunday and Monday, we're not going to be able dudes. to touch base. Although we'll do something on social media, so yep. follow us there. Yep. But in terms of right here, maybe it's not going to happen. Um, I want to get back to the draft, but real quick, these guys in the sub submarine real quick. Oh, you want to get to that first? Just real quick. Okay. 
um, I, I, uh, horrific. My, my, my point is this. What? The human being, like the human race, is not meant to do that. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is, Andy. We don't need to be going down there. Yes, we do. Nobody needs to be going exploration down there. Exploration is a key point of where we're at right now in life is exploration that was a tourist gimmick it's a big difference those subs that uh stockton rush put together were not verified by the military by any the oceanography whatever the fuck. how do you get one like you rent them he built it he built that himself and he bragged about how easy Which it was to build. stockton rush who, who died in it his wife which one is he stockton rush is a ceo of Ocean Gate or Ocean. So he's that guy. Yes. So he's the ocean expert. Yeah. And he's done well, like he's done like fifty seven previous not, explorations yes, down there and this was the fifty eighth. So he's yeah. been doing it since two thousand twenty one. And they've been going down there and every single time there's seven times since two thousand twenty one. I don't think it's fifty seven. I think that's no, been this down was there. like his fifty eight. Fifty seven people have been down there, I think. I think it's twelve. We can look that up, Brody. Go ahead. Anytime we talk about <laughs> shit, please get that going, man. So we we don't argue the whole time. Yeah. So anyway, that's okay. Yeah. It's been it's they've done it before. Mm-hmm. There's always problems. There was always problems. And and the way the shell worked, the way he built the shell was mixed in with two different materials. And everybody, including James Cameron, to all these was experts. There a crack in it? Listen, all these experts like that material is not going to last. They've warned them. They've warned them. They they've were telling them. them that. Yes, they've warned them. They all disres- They don't respect Stockton Rush. God rest his soul. He died, but they never respect him. The big boys never respect him. He was a rogue. The billionaires didn't. Those it's not guys. necessarily billionaires. It's guys that are oh, like the professionals. The dude from Pakistan, like the oh, military guys. Oh, you're not referring to the no. guys who went on there. God, with dude, follow me here, please. Yeah. 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 No, the billionaires the like them because they want to go see the Titanic and they're going to pay $250,000 to go down there and see That's it. That's what they charge? Yes. And he, he pockets that? Well, it's expensive to do that, too. Like, he's got to have a mothership up there. you got to build this craft. There's a lot that goes so into he it. he organized the whole yes, thing. Yes, and he's rogue. And a lot of stuff he did was was kind of cheaply done. And people warned him and warned him and warned him, and they didn't respect him, including James Cameron. I keep throwing James Cameron. That guy's been down there more than anybody. For the most part, like he's been studying this for a long, long time. They've warned the guy he was rogue and, you know, there was probably a little crack or wear and tear on that thing. And right when they went down, right when the pressure got to a certain point, boom, it's over. Right. Now, those guys didn't feel a thing. It's so it's two nanoseconds. And before your the spine could reach your brain to mm-hmm. tell you, it's like four nanoseconds. So it's like nothing. You don't even know. And it completely collapsed on them. And there's a couple different parts that scattered before the Titanic mm-hmm. that they found. Now, give the French a shout out. They got damn good submarines and damn good They pilots. got a lot of good things in France, actually. You know, uh, I, I did my honeymoon there. So right? I like France. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But when I wouldn't live there, man, no. But, but they got there first and they found that thing pretty fast. The French? But did. listen. Yes. But listen. All the experts knew it was over right when it happened. Before it started? No. Well, they thought it was Are people a, monitoring this this launch or whatever? It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a It's, it's a not a launch. Thing. Launch will be going this way. You launch it going it, down. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Don't don't confuse the audience. But uh but they well god, now I'm distracted. Quit distracting me. You, the, you, the you, French, I'm trying to fucking the French say something. got them. The French yeah. got him, and, and my, my question is this for you. What do you got? Well, ask me a question, because all you're doing uh, is... Okay, my, my question is, are people aware that they're doing this yeah. excursion? Of course. And are they on top of the water, like, waiting for them to come back up? Like, are people... No, like, the family how, member... How did everybody know that, that they were having some issues? Because they didn't alert anybody. What are you talking about? So the mothership is, is watching this sub go down, and they're communicating, 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 and all of a sudden, the communication stops. And they're like, what? And they're like, whoa, 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 hey, wait, wait, you there, you there. Okay, now it's boom. Uh, SOS. We got we have lost communication with this sub. And then they uh, uh, re- then they send out a signal to everybody like, hey, we need Navy. We need people coming in here. We got to figure yeah. something out. Let's look. Fly Canadians flew over and found a pen. Like they found, like I heard something. They cru- cruised yeah, by. Yeah, they hearing noises. Yeah, but that those noises, done, done, done. Every 30 minutes, that wasn't them. Obviously, it was not. The o- You could hear a whale in the ocean a half uh, all the way half of, uh, around the world. Wouldn't they uh, be able to Under the differentiate wa- what they're hearing? It's tough. It's tricky, dude. You're so far down. You could hear all kinds Should of Should they have things. the Navy SEALs standing by and all these other rescue people standing by at the time? Fuck no. You know how much money that would cost? You know how much money that would cost? You're going to have Navy SEALs? What are they going to do? The only way you can get them if you have another sub and you're going to have another sub waiting? You know how much money that's going to cost? Did you see Doesn't that? Doesn't make any Did sense. Did you see that other submarine? 
that was cruising. I mean, going fast, dude. Like those things go super fast. No, they don't. Well, this they one was fast going fast at all. This one was going fast, and the U.S. Coast Guard. That was a drug. That was a yes, that was a Mexican. They caught up the side of them, dude. They You're jump on homie. top of the submarine and they're pounding on the Coast top Guard. of it. Yeah, the Coast Guard. Yep, that was a drug dealer. I'm yeah. surprised it it didn't turn into like a shootout. Well, they could have. They were probably like, "Hey, we're we're just the runners." They're probably they're you know. screaming in Spanish, dude. I know. Anyway, so back back. No, to the this Coast thing. Guard is. So let me tell you a couple weird things about this sub. We're, we're quick, and we're gonna get too far in it because Andy. Gets me off track, and it's it's hard to tell Cam's a story. Cam's like a submarine expert now. But right? here's a weird story. If you guys watch the movie Titanic, which is one of my favorite movies, it truly is. Even the fucking love romantic, story, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. When I was in 1997, I watched it, it fucking made me cry because it's, it's just so hardcore. And so the lady of Stockton, Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate or whatever the fuck it's called, his wife, her ancestors were a very famous couple, wealthy couple, first class on the Titanic. And in the movie, they told the story. She's told the story. The story's in the, in, the, in the record books about them. She was offered, when the ship was going down, her great-great-grandmother was offered, here, here's a seat on the ship. She's a first-class uh, citizen on there. She goes, no, I'm staying with my husband. And in the movie, you see it. And there's a part in the movie, which is the saddest part in Titanic, is when the water's coming up and those two go and they lay in bed as an older couple holding each other, crying like we love each other while the water's uh, rushing That's in. Hollywood. Uh, th- that's this a, is Hollywood. This was connected. That's why James Cameron did it because of the storyline. Okay. God, man, come on. No, I got no, you. you just, but like, Hollywood. You, you believe all that Hollywood I stuff. I read about all that stuff. A lot of... No, that's that's why so they it, put that. And it's one of the saddest parts of the movie. That's a true story. Is she story. still alive, the uh, woman? The that, woman is. She didn't go down the sub. Right. So she is still alive, though. Stockton Rush is my the wife. The wife, yes. Yeah. So now here, another weird thing, dudes. The, the two billionaires, the son that's 19 year from old. Pakistan. From Pakistan. There's money guys. They're Did they step- go to Blink-182 the night the, before? The stepson. During, knowing that his Travis dad Barker probably was playing. Yeah. And yeah, Kourtney Kardashian quick, quick, was there, by the me, way. Because you, you do that a lot. <laughs> um, so the, the stepson uh-huh. took a picture at Blink-182 while his dad and his st- stepdad and stepbrother are sunken, they, probably dead. Well, he was there the next day? Yes, while they're fucking missing. And he's like, hi, I'm at Blink-182, like a selfie. He's like, my dad and stepbrother would, would want me to come see my favorite band. I, I didn't see that. He yeah. really said that? Yeah. My dad and stuff. So his stepbrother is that, was... Is that debunked? Because I read it, and then you know, no one's yeah, Cam's Cam's been reading about this. For t- I have work us on your work, work on your so, long game. Hey, uh, dude. Work, one, on, work on your approach. Hey, shots. one other thing. So I just I went down these rabbit holes, to guys. You know, I love like these tragedies are so hardcore, but I get interested in them, man. The missing planes, Flight Three Seventy from yeah, Malaysia. Yeah, me too. So I'm watching this. They interview this guy from 1979. One of the first times a sub went down and somebody was actually rescued. It wasn't this far down, twelve thousand feet, but it was far enough in the 70s. And they rescued him and the. Actually, one guy, he was with a group of people. In 1979? In, in 79, wow. when they were doing it. Jean Cousteau had been doing this for a long long time in subs. So they're down there, and they're running out of uh, air, running out of air, and one of the guys takes one of the extra oxygen tanks and hides it. And everybody else dies, and he's puffing on this thing, staying alive, and all of a sudden, boom, rescue team comes and rescues him, and he's the one that's alive because he hid. So that's a true story? That's what the guy said on, on the news. He told a Is story video, about it. Is video yeah, coverage yep, of that? yep. This is in 1979. Yeah, in, in so they had the uh, yeah. they had the technology to be able to go down and rescue those guys yeah. even back then. Not that far down, probably. Not that far down. Not twelve thousand. But, but yeah, I just far, can't yeah. relate to the um, excursion people. Well, when you're a billionaire, you run out of things that make you build your adrenaline. You know, right now, if we had a t- that kind not of money, not every billionaire, not that, but lives on adrenaline. A lot of them do, because that's why you are billionaires, because you have that adrenaline to keep doing more and more and more. Yeah, so I want they this, travel, I want this. They invest in like business. Richard Bronson and Elon Musk, and like they're always doing something. When you're a billionaire, you just you're nonstop. You're nonstop. So I feel like these guys are like, what's the next rush we can get? Well, you want to climb Mount Everest, you want to try to go in space. Well, let's go see the Titanic. And even record the aunt of the, the Pakistani billionaires comes out and says, That kid did not want to go down there. Yes. That teenager? That little teenager is like, I'm scared to death. Told his aunt before he left. Really? I know. Isn't that something, Hey, though? what's going on down there? What do you mean the Titanic? Like the original Titanic that sunk 
it, like there's just a what debris down there. Like what is it that this that's down? What are they Andy, going to see? Andy, what are they going to they're see? Seeing the ship now. There's a lot of barnacles and there, and 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 there's a lot of. Uh, Why don't they bring it up? God, because you can't. You don't touch that thing. You couldn't have. You don't have the equipment to do that. You kidding? That is two and a half miles down. You do not have the equipment. How big was the Titanic? Gigantic. Ship? Now you look at an ocean, a cruise liner. Now it. it they dwarf the Titanic. But the Titanic... Should I be nervous about taking the I, ferry ex- over to no, Nantucket no, from you're Cape fine. Cod? No, you're fine. But listen, Andy, you could... Why don't you watch a video on YouTube? They have... those James Cameron will show you. They'll show you, like, what they they film. They go down the Grand Scarecase and right here, and they'll show a picture right next to it. And like, that's what it looked like. Then they'll show you, like, a different room. Here's a master room on the first class. This is what it looked like. They know exactly where they're at and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Now, it's deteriorating. Maybe in 20, 50 th- years, it's going to be really banged up because there's there's metal eating bacteria that's eaten away at a lot of stuff. Wow. Some stuff's preserved, like a big can- a chan- chandelier. It, this big chandelier in the ballroom is still there down there. It looks the exact same. Oh, really? Yes. But a lot of times those subs go down there and get stuck. Can I ask a serious question? Yeah, I don't know, though, Andy. You're You're, not good at keeping up with stuff. There's an old saying back in the day that there's no such thing as a dumb question, and you don't don't like any of my questions. People are thinking this. They Uh, want to know. Maybe you're right. I don't want to act like... They they want people people to want to know. Okay. I hear that from people all the time. During They they, they say I ask the questions that people want to know. Okay. 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 I, I would. I would think that people would know a little bit more than you. about the same thing. Okay. So I'm know. asking the questions that they're good. thinking. It's all good. Go ahead. How many people a year are going down to see this damn Titanic? Probably fifty. Is that the only way to get there? By sub? Submer- submersible. No, you, t- you could take a sub- rocket submersible. ship down there. Yes, of course. It's the only way. Yeah. Very expensive to do. It's a very expensive. Do they have submersibles that are not? dangerous to go in that like you can like pretty much like uh you're gonna go down you're gonna be able to come back listen talk to elon musk should should make one quit asking me a question and interrupting me just let me talk tesla listen to me he's got enough going on there's all if you listen to all the experts that go that are on on these things consistently through the military through russia through france russia's got great submarines with subs when they go down they're never worried about an implosion never they're worried about getting caught on something and right. having and they, there was some thought originally that, 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 that could have happened was not it. It was an implosion. They had no idea. It was right when it right when they got to a certain point. Boom! It's over. Three days later, they lot, the experts knew that it was like that, but they didn't want to. They wanted more time. So people, it reminded me when I was so, in kindergarten. Everyone gathered around the TV, and you're watching the uh, Challenger. Oh, exactly right. Although That's exactly right, everybody knew that morning that the Challenger was going to take off. I don't think anybody woke up and was like, oh, the billionaire from Pakistan is heading down to see the Titanic today. No. Like, nobody knew that. You know why the Challenger was so big is because they had the, the woman, teacher. Yes, the teacher. Yeah. So that's why. Because they've been going and they've been going, and it got, they were doing so many liftoffs. They were launches Would a year. Would you do that? No. NASA was a time in the 80s where they were launching so many that no one gave a fuck. It was like, it wasn't even in the newspaper anymore. So they needed to spice it up. And they spiced it up and they had this woman come on. And it was really cold down in Florida and the O-rings froze. And it's a little, one little thing, Andy. One little thing, an O-ring. Because they they were waiting so much, it was so hyped up that Mm -hmm. they rushed it. And it was freezing cold in Florida where they, the launch site is, and an O-ring froze, and that was all it took. Yeah. It exploded. Listen, when I was a kid, and, like, you're running around with your buddies, and, like, they're, everyone's doing crazy shit. Like, I was always that one. I just was never comfortable, like, I was never a risk taker. I was never, like, super adventurous with some of this shit. Like, skydiving is not appealing to me. Yeah. Um, going down to see the Titanic, I have zero interest in doing that. Tell me how it is. Let me know you if see you it see YouTube. it, and just let me know what, what the experience is like. Uh, going up to see space, not doing it. Okay, it's, it depends. Um, you know, a- anything that like uh, you know, parachuting, Bung- bungee jumping, bungee jumping. No, I get you. E- even like zip lining across, like oh, that's okay. Oh, like if you're going across a huge, across like, a huge can- canyon, like or something. Grand Canyon or something. Uh-uh, Andy, you're like, right. I'm, you know, I get you. You know what I like? Hmm. Fast boats. I don't even care about fast. Well, when cars. Carl was driving like, my boat, I like fast boats. That's what gets me going. I like being on a boat that cruises, man. Or even if it doesn't go that fast, boating gets my high. Gets me. It gets my fucking blood going. I love boating. 
Carl drove our boat in uh, oh, Lake Tahoe. The guy Tahoe. creeping your wife out? Yeah. yeah. He was going way too fast, dude. I was He's like, showing off to Lori. Bro- <laughs> so fast that the table broke on, on top of the boat. I'm thinking about getting a boat, too, in uh, Cape Cod. I'm just curious to see what we're going to end up doing. I want to go fishing in Nantucket, yeah. dude. I've seen all people go yeah, fishing go, over there. That'd be cool. Yeah. Damn good food up there, too, man. I hear that. It's beautiful up there. I've checked the menu. Price, oh, yeah, are you going to eat anything? The price is Again, like, giving yeah. me anxiety. Anytime I t- I'll, I'll take Andy out to dinner anytime and pick the tab up, dude. Anytime. Oh, it's you just will. not going to cost me It won't any cost money. you any it money. It won't cost me any money. Eats like a bird. You're like, oh, I'm full. I'm like, you, I'm like, oh, I've been eating all day. Like, Andy, you order anything? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm eating a sugar packet. Actually, you won't even do that. You bro. know what I've been eating a lot, dude? Are these dots. Nothing. Dot pretzels <laughs> with the seasoning on it, dude. I, I can eat a whole bag of that shit. Okay, I bet that's what I've been. That's what I've been eating. Uh, so looking forward to getting to Nashville. Yeah, I'm excited about. Uh, you we'll being see down what there. happens with a lot of stuff. Free agency around the corner. Um, real quick, the Hall of Fame. Alexander McGillney, like everyone's up Man, in arms about it. I love Al. Uh, listen, I will say this: I had a Hall of Famer say, "Like, why? Why is everyone all up in arms? Like, it, it, his numbers aren't that good." Alexander McGillney is a Stanley Cup winner. I think two time with Jersey. He is. I don't know about that. He defected. Can double he, check how many times he won a cup. It's one or two. He defected from Russia when the first one's coming over here. So that is. He paved the path paved for Pablo Murray, yes. for Sergey Fedorov. Yes, he did. He fucking said, fuck you to Mike Keenan. No, no, no. I defected from Russia. You're not going to fucking Scored tell me. 76 what to do. one Scored year. Scored 76 in Buffalo. He was, he was my line mate. With my first year. He won the Lady Devils. Bing, by the way. He was my line mate with the first year. That, 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 that oh, no, keeps I'm, you out of the Hall of Fame. Like, I mean, the fact that he was, see, like, you're <laughs> completely discrediting him. The fact that he was your line mate, no other Hall of Famer was ever a fourth liner, I'll tell you that. He was a fourth liner. Know, there for, probably was or two. Yeah, or there two. was a couple, dude. <laughs> and it was at the end of his career, and Lou and Co- him and Kozlov were on my line, and he never bitched at me one time. He is the nicest guy in the world, and I hope he does get in, because I loved him. He death. will get in. So, sorry about that, Andy. I played with Alexander McGillney, and Andy chirps me for it. So no, funny. I know. He, Listen. And, and there's no credit... No matter what, Andy, <laughs> always fine. I'm playing with Alexander McGillney my first year, and I get chirped for it. That's funny. And Yager. <laughs> yeah, and Yager. <laughs> no, actually, Yager never played with me. He was always on the first Well, he line. never played with you. He never got off the ice, and he'd screw my line changes over because mm-hmm. he was the first. first he uh, did tell you to find religion. Yes, he did. He told me I needed to find Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think he was serious. Oh, he was serious. When I grabbed his He's like, not thing. the only one that ever told you that. No, he's not. There's, there's a lot. Been lots of there's people. a couple people that mm-hmm. looked at me in my soul and said, mm-hmm. "You need to find him." And yeah. I'm like, "I have." When Jesus. I'm watching you golf, I think I may have said that on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was praying okay, to Jesus that saying, you'd show up so you wouldn't I, die. I just listen. The Hall of Fame comes out. There are people who you know personally who you'd like to see to get in. And I'd love to see Keith Kachuk get in. Course, I feel like man. he will get in at some point. I, I, I don't know. So. I don't know. Why you're a Hall of Famer like eight years from now, but you're not a Hall of Famer today. Like that's a good. They're question. putting these goalies in. I guess they're all deserving to be in. Mike Vernon had a hell of a career. I really don't have a problem with one him in getting in. 89. 89, I'm sorry. But he also won with one of those Detroit, Detroit teams. teams yeah. But I don't know if he was. He was the starter for one of them. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Oz could get hurt. Or yeah, something that. Right? He he was the number one. Yep. He took over. What about Cujo? Cujo, no you Stanley can make Cup. the uh, argument, was a better goaltender than Tom Barrasso. But... He Barrasso, he's got a great story. I will say this about Barrasso. And I'm trying to how to say this. Like, he may be, he played here for a very short time in St. Louis. Yeah. Like, maybe the biggest dick I've ever met. Really? Yes. I was wondering what you are going to say. Because anytime you, you have, like, an announcement where you take your time. It's that I've born. ever covered. Really? He, he would have, like, fit in with, like, a baseball player, something like that. I think baseball players today are probably cooler than they used to be. They used to be dicks. Yeah. Baseball players, oh, my God. He's like a Barry Bonds or something like that, you know? Tom Barrasso. Tom Barrasso. Like what? He just wasn't very nice. Like, how you doing, Tom? And uh, I think people who have met him and know him are going to hear that and be like, yeah. Really? That's kind of who he was. I don't hold it against him. It's fine. There's a lot of people who are probably what, dicks. You what know? if you were annoying? And he was addicted to you. No, it like was, some of the comments. Whenever they, uh, when we ask people to leave a comment, they're no, like, he he just, "Cam's mean to no, Andy." No, he's one of those guys. Drives me nuts. Yeah, <laughs> expect people say that. To you about yeah, you. Andy. So it's so funny. Like another thing, real quick. 
Thank can I can I finish my story? Yeah, go ahead. My uh, let, let me finish. My bad. I mean, geez, can I finish my story? Welcome. <laughs> See how it feels. Sorry. Go ahead. He he's one of those, and a lot of people kind of share that opinion. He's one of those guys where, like, if it's after a game, yeah, he's a dick to reporter. He's not going to be nice. Yeah. Get you're like, no, I'm not talking today. You know, no, leave Calm me alone. You know, oh, he needs to. Calm so down, I remember down. I was a young reporter at the time. Uh, Chris Pronger was out for the year with an ACL injury. He had the ACL and the wrist. And um, I remember standing there in the locker room after a game, and I was talking to Prongs. Barassa was here for, like, literally just a couple weeks. Like it was, probably wasn't even a month. You can double-check how many games he played here. Like it was Not much. Less than five. Yeah. I even joked around with him the other day, sent him a text, and called him a blues legend, you know. like you know, What did he say? He won't. He, he didn't won't, get back to you? He won't. No, he has gotten back to me in the past. Jesus. He's buddy. just not a very friendly guy. Okay. So maybe Dick is harsh because I don't like to say that. But all I'm trying to say is he it's just wasn't very friendly. So I remember saying to Prongs in the locker room, I'm like, this guy is an asshole, man. He's like, well, fucking go tell him that. And Chris, Chris makes <laughs> yeah. a big deal out of it. You know, like he's all loud. Oh, go tell him he's an asshole then, you know. Yeah. Hey, Tom, Andy has something to say to you. <laughs> oh, he'd say something like That's that. That's funny, though. Oh, yeah. So but, he's a dick. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I just couldn't believe it. That's the that's the impression I've always had of Tom Barrasso. But if you read his story, Cam, he's got an incredible story. This guy went straight from high school to the NHL as a goalie. It's crazy. He won the Calder going straight from high school to the NHL as a goalie. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And he's won a couple of cups. He was on the he was the goalie for those Mario teams. Yep, that's right. So I just don't have a problem with him going into the Hall of Fame. I think he truly is one of the, you know, legendary goaltenders of his era. What about Patrick Eliash? I think he deserves to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He's got two or three. He's no, he doesn't have 95. He's, he's got to have two. He's got two. And he was a big part he's of those two, dog. man. Patty was a – I like Patty. So dude. he's one of those guys I feel like – people like him, Brenda Moore, yeah. uh, Keith Kachuk. Get them all in. Jeremy Roenick. <laughs> I know. They're all going to get in. They're all, get them in. It's just a matter of when they get in. Like, Do you think that – Alexander Mogilny, the fact that he's Russian is the reason why he didn't get in? I don't know. And if it is, then that's god awful. Because he's separated from Russia. Give me your guess. I would say he's back there. I now, would say no, he? because he got snubbed before Russia mm -hmm. invaded Ukraine. You know? Mm -hmm. Didn't he? So of like course, that yeah. had nothing to do with it then. Yeah, they went to Crimea in fourteen with Obama. Um I, I, I don't know, Andy. I don't. I hope not. I will say some of I these. I hope not. Some of the writers they get they get so upset. You know, like I like uh, about him. When the Hall of Fame every year, they just get yeah. very upset. Oh, they're emotional. They're very emotional, and it's just like you know, with the uh, the Board of Governor meetings, with the uh, cap now going up one million bucks to eighty three point five. Uh, also, the news that come out of the Board of Governor meetings is that NHL players will not be wearing different jerseys. Yeah. On theme nights during pregame shows, even military. I don't think so. Okay, all right. You gotta if you're gonna cut one out, you gotta do all. I guess. Mm -hmm. Look again. That doesn't bother me. It just doesn't. None, none, none of that. None of that like patty shit bothers me. It just doesn't. People got really they, upset. I about know. It. I know. Because it's and Pride Month. It's Pride Month and all that stuff. I, I I get all that, but it just it just doesn't. Somebody wears it. Fine. If you don't wear it. Fine. It just doesn't bother me. Are you nice to people? Mm -hmm. Like, do you respect the people? That's all. Here's my take on it. Just respect everybody. Here's my take on it. And yeah. first off, the Board of Governors meeting happened to fall during Pride Month. Wait, do you want them to, like, discuss this now and then wait till, like, July 1st to make the announcement? I think Pride Month's every month. Okay, so to wait till, I mean, so it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, people are reaching there, you know, a little bit. But That's my feeling right. is this on the whole thing. I mean, because even, like, you know, I'm sure they're still going to celebrate Hockey Fights Cancer. They're still going to celebrate Military Night, Cam. You know, I think they just may not have the jerseys. I bet you they still have Pride Nights at most of these uh, NHL arenas throughout the league. They're still going to have Pride Nights. They're just not going to wear the jerseys. Okay. My feeling is if the jersey is going to get in the way of what the actual message is supposed to be. Then don't wear it. Then don't wear it. So, you know, if it creates more negative attention than positive attention, and that's what we saw this past year. Of course. You're going to have players who don't want to wear it. When they don't want to wear it, what happens? We lose the message. We lose what the significance is supposed to be as to why you're having these theme nights to begin with. And all the talk and all the reaction is only about one guy or whoever that guy is. 
that won't wear the jersey. Yep. So I think the league is like, okay, this is just getting completely out of control. You got people on social media just completely losing their mind. It gets so they're a big reason as to why they're getting rid of it too. It's not just because one player said no. It's because of the reaction and all these guys going absolutely crazy and going nuts on social media. It got too much, and I think the owner said, "You know what? We're not doing it. Send them back to Russia." <laughs> Remember that? That's what happened, dude. That's my take. Well, who's that? EJ Raddick was like, "I prove it off. He can go back to Russia and fight in his own war." Like, Jesus. Like, <laughs> I mean, okay, okie dokie. <laughs> it was like very personal. What personal. if it, you know you gonna say it to everybody? What if what if a guy from Central Africa came over here that was Muslim mm-hmm. and didn't wear it? Would you tell him to go back to we Congo? We talked about that then. Talk to go back to Congo and fight in your war? Fuck no. You escape that. Mm-hmm. You're you nice to people, like are you in the community, you know? I don't know. It's just people get people really get Yeah, but crazy he didn't escape it. like Russia. Who did? Ivan Provorov. Provorov? Well, he got out of came there. Came here to make a lot more money. Hell yeah. And he's going to pay, he's paying taxes here. He's, you know. Well, now he, food. Got, now he got traded. You know, he's, well, he's in Columbus. He's, he's spending money. He's going to buy a big house there. He's Columbus. Gonna, you know. What else is Columbus going to do? Cool. Well, they got a couple new players, man. They got a they, Damian Stevenson, they, too. They want he's a, a pretty good player. He is. They want a center. Yeah. Get Ryan O'Reilly. Have Babcock. Hey, I'm curious about the team now. You got Babcock. You got a couple things going on. You're terrible. Michael you know? Babcock Jr. He doesn't go by Mike. He goes by Michael. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> How's he? You know him? Um, I don't know him, but I will say this because now he's been hired as a skills coach by the Blues. Yeah. I honestly hear great things about him. Like he worked with the Ottawa Senators last year. Apparently, like Brady Kachuk and all these guys absolutely loved him. Really? So, you know, listen, it, just because it's his dad, like he's probably not the same, you know, but. There probably are some qualities where he is the same. He probably really knows the fucking game. He's probably game. smart. He's probably smart as shit. Mike Babcock, you can say what we want about him. He's a smart dude. He knows the game. He damn right he does. He's successful. And Babs will be a little bit different. I think you're right. But I also look at Babs and I'm like, you know, I watched this whole situation go down in Toronto. Yeah. He's probably like, although he probably should have handled it a little bit differently. But he's trying to get the most out of Mitchie Marnie and all these guys. Mitchie. And so, you know, now when you bring... The exact opposite, and when you bring uh, Dubas, he comes in, Dubas. and he just wants to like you know read him bedtime stories at night and tuck him in. Like, that doesn't get him to the next level either. Yeah, no doubt, there's a balance, certainly a balance to it. Hopefully, you can. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we can turn that team around, man. Hey, we were talking about Russians though. You know, like there's this uh, Matvey uh, Mikov. Yeah, he, he, he's like Best pick. Well, some people say that, like a couple years ago in the U18s, he was playing for Russia. Uh, Bedard was playing for Canada. The U18s at the time were held in Dallas, Texas, actually, in the summertime. And at the beginning of the tournament, both players looked like the youngest players on their team because they were. By the end of the tournament, both players were the best players on their team. He's a hell of a talent, but I hear he's been red flagged by a number of teams. I hear his... Red f- like what? Like there's something... There's There's some... Some character issues. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, damn. Like a nail Yakupov situation. I hear character issues like people who follow him and know him in Russia are spreading that information. Like what kind of stuff? Because Nail Yakupov's not a bad guy. He just had a bad interview that blew up because of Nail Yakupov, I got to know pretty really well. Nice guy. He's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I talking He's to him. cool as shit. He just had a bad interview with Brian Burke, and Brian Burke wanted to strangle him. And that could just yeah, be Yeah, but like, that may be a little unfair to... You're right. And it could be his agent telling him what like to do. Like Brian Burke. I, I love you, Berkey, but like, you know, like <laughs> you haven't exactly gone and like lit it up either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In Toronto or you go back to Pittsburgh. He should have just stayed in television, Brian Burke, and not go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> now you, you go to Pittsburgh, you got Crosby and Malkin, you don't even make the playoffs, dude. I know. And then you get fired? He lost the last After like game a year or two? To Chicago, knock it in. So, like, the, you know, the whole act with the tie and all that stuff and the slick back hair. I, I, you know, get, I, get, I get you. I, I'm just saying, so you this know, guy's got some char- so, character flaws. I mean, to kind saying? of spread that about a Russian player who who <laughs> was pretty much a bust and isn't playing here anymore, I don't even, you know, it is what it is. Although I like hearing those stories. And so I love I, Berkey, man. I think he's very smart. And, and I like him on television. But, you know, just probably should stay in TV. Probably. You know? Sometimes you He's kind of like Bruce there it is. Like, the day after they're fired. Yeah, they're back on TV. I, I gotta, I gotta be there. You know, <laughs> take it, kick your feet up. Just kick your feet up. Kick your feet up. Probably give him another job somewhere. Yeah, 
I don't, I don't know. These guys, you just they, they just keep getting jobs. Yep. But you How keep getting jobs. Lobby, our boy Lobby got a job. I know. I'm happy for him. Uh, me too. I like him a lot. He was great. I, I think he's a good. I mean, what else are you going to do? Are you going to get something better than him right now? No. For that team? You need you need a big dog for that team. Mm-hmm. You need a, a big, loud, yeah. you know, respected coach. So I think, I, think, I think there are some teams that will shy away from that particular Russian as opposed to shying away from Russians altogether, although it's been a little bit more of a challenge, Cam, to scout those guys because they weren't, oh, yeah. they weren't invited to some of the international tournaments. So you're pr- pretty much relying on video. So what are, or a what are, the, what are the rumors that he does? Just attitude? Yeah, I don't really know the specifics. I just know Alcoholic. that there's... A, no, I don't know. Okay. So I don't want to, like, spread it. I get you. All I'm I just know, I've just been told that there's some, like, the stuff that some of these people have been hearing about oh. him would lead to teams or, staying away. Or they're starting rumors, so he drops a little bit and somebody snags him. No, because no, nobody I, told me that for me to, okay, like, I'm just, put that out there. I like cons- a good conspiracy theory. I'm just That's putting all, it baby. out there anyway. <laughs> That's all, baby. <laughs> I mean, I'll put this out there too. Apparently, Arizona, like they oh they don't believe that they're going anywhere. They think they're staying in Arizona. Oh. That now they have other options. Oh God. I'll say this about the Arizona Coyotes: I think they're going to have a different approach to their off season this year. And I don't know what free agents they'll get and all that. I don't know if guys are going to want to sign there because you know they're going to have to go play in that you know North American Hockey League building. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you My know, God. so I don't know if anybody's going to want to do that. But then when you go like. Talk to the players there, and you can live in Scottsdale, and you can do it. There's a lot of positives that can come with it. I think they want to open up the pocketbook a little bit. I don't know if they expect to make the playoffs this year, Cam, but I think they view themselves much like Buffalo did going into last season, and Buffalo barely missed the playoffs. I think I think Arizona's looking at, at their team much like the Sabres and being like, hey, we're going to make a push for the postseason. I don't know if we're going to make it, but we're going to make a push. So they bought out some players. One guy that I think they could have interest in, that I know they have interest in, that they will try to sign. I would never put my money on signing this particular player, but is Ivan Barbashev. Really? Ivan Barbashev. Barbashev is a guy who was drafted by Billy Armstrong. Mm -hmm. They have a very good relationship. Yeah. And I would think that maybe Billy, there's a chance, is going to take a run at Ivan Barbashev. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen. The Florida Panthers have Barbashev as their number one. As their number one. Uh, Matthew Kachuk would love to have Ivan Barbashev. Oh, hell yeah. Playing next to him. Oh, hell yeah. I would imagine. Oh, hell yeah. If you look at what Barbashev did in Vegas, I mean, he just elevated the play of Jack Eichel, as we've said several times, and the other guy on the line won the Conn Smythe. So, you know, Barbashev's in a great position. It's interesting with him because there's going to be a lot of teams that have interest, and we'll see how much money he gets, Cam. I hear he's looking for something that could start with a six, that he's looking at, you know, certain, uh, you know, comparable contracts Andre Palak got six million per year from Jersey. Uh, Pavel Buchnevich got uh, five point eight five from St. Louis. Valerie Nichushkin, I think he signed an eight year deal. I'm pretty sure he got a max deal with Colorado <coughs> at six point two five. Uh, Barbashev, I, I I fully believe that he thinks that he's going to be able to get something in that range. Now, there's some like talk that Vegas has not reached out to Barbashev. Sources have told me that Vegas has not reached out to Barbashev. And when I heard that, I was like, well, I was like almost shocked. Like, how could they, they not, you know, reach out to, to Barbashev? This is like, yeah. like, he loved it in Vegas. The he teammates was, loved him. He loved it there. He was a big That, that wouldn't make attribute. any sense. Sources with Vegas now have come around and told me that that is not true. That they're not, they're having a hard time getting a phone call back. So, you know, we'll see where this goes with Barbashev. Regardless, he's in a great spot. I mean, I, I can't think of a much better spot in the league than being in Vegas, you know? Like, you win every year, and you get to live there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great situation. But I don't know how much money they have. And listen, these players, Cam, at this stage of the game, this close to free agency, the way everyone networks behind the scenes, they pretty much know what teams are in the game, what teams are not in the game, and... You know, those teams pretty much have a firm understanding of what it's going to, what that price tag looks like to get these players. Interesting. Good for Barbie. You got options, buddy, and you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. Now, Calgary's kind of flipping out a little bit. They're Calgary, like, man. Hey. What the hell? I think Daryl Sutter. Listen, I know they had some good seasons. 
in Calgary, but he definitely left the overall morale of the organization God. in a much worse Seems position like than it was when he got there. Seems like it. He sucked the life out of so yeah. many people. I where know. they're all like, get me out of here. I kind of feel bad for Craig Conroy, but at the same time, it's probably a good situation for Conroy. Yeah, start from scratch. Like, don't, so. don't, now he doesn't have the pressure to maybe <laughs> have to sign somebody or give somebody more money than he knows he wants to. Yeah. But, you know, you don't want to completely come in and just get crushed by the Man, media and I, the fans. I saw just on his post game interviews with Daryl Sutter, just the way he reacted to certain things. Like, I'll give an example. A, a young kid played his first game. Somebody asked him, Hey, how's so and so? He's like, Huh? He looks at his sheep. Uh, six minutes of ice, one hit, one shot, minus one. How do you think he played? Like, okay. Yeah. Like, that's it. This kid's like, just got up. Like, what if you're that kid's dad? Whatever. And you're listening. He's a grown ass adult. Well, I'm saying good. no, but you're listening. He just played his first NHL game. His oh, my family. dad would have. My dad would have been crushed, you know. But and I just that feel like kid you, plays his first ever just, game. Just just little little things like that suck the life out of you. You walk by your coach. He doesn't say hi to you in, in the in the uh, in the hallway. Sucks the life out of you. Little things like that. Never positive. You you got to balance it, man. You have to have a balance with that. And I just I just even watching his post game interviews. I'm like God. It's just is so down and out. Even and it's tr- funny, but it's not. Even Brad Tree Living was like, I'm out of here. Fuck yeah. Like, he couldn't win that war. No. He whatever. wanted Daryl out of there. The owner wanted to keep Daryl in there. Daryl. My cousin Daryl. My Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. So, so then Brad Tree Living's like, I'm gone. And then they fire Daryl Sutter because all the players, I will say this though, all the players basically told. You know, Maloney and others, probably Conroy, in the exit meetings, basically, like, Daryl's got to go. Like, the players were saying that. And now all the players, like, don't want to sign there. Yep. So, like, the players, you're kind of like, hey, you you got what you wanted. You got them out of there. And now everybody wants to leave. I know. You know what I'm saying? That sucks, man. It's like one guy wants to go. Everybody's like, Craig Conroy is one of the nicest people in the business. So maybe this will be good just to let, you know, it, it just move some guys, get some assets, and, and kind of, you know, start fresh. They got Jerome Ginlin now working there. Like, they'll, they'll have a good thing going, getting a new building, all that stuff. Yeah, that's going to be huge. You know. The Saddle Dome's a dump right now. You yeah. got to get a new building. But I think Johnny Hockey, I always had the impression, and from what I heard from other people, is that he really liked it there. But I, he wanted out of there. He wasn't going to play for Daryl anymore. Daryl? And now he's got Babcock. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sometimes that's He what, might need a Babcock. Sometimes that's what these guys need. I know. He did put up like 115 points under Daryl. True that. True that. It's going to be interesting, man. I can't. I hope there's excitement. I hope there's a bunch of trades. I hope the Blues, because we're here in St. Louis, I hope they find a way to get their shit together. Army's always on the prowl. I know his phone's are burning. So hopefully, I, I just hope there's a lot of action, man. I'm curious to see how these top five picks are going to be, Andy. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see Connor Bedard. I'm going to watch all his clips. Shit, if I was in Chicago and that kid came, I'd be at every fucking scrimmage, every practice, if you could, just see the, just to see what he does, see mm-hmm. how he is compared to a couple other guys. Know to see if he sticks out a little bit. I don't know. There's a lot of good things going on in hockey, man. You got some superstars coming into the league, and I think the lead. Is due for another big dog. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Like, what do you think? Oh yeah, the league's ready for another big another dog. Another big dog. We're ready. Like we've we've but had him. Listen, I was talking to, be too. to Dan Marr. He's the uh, head guy with NHL Central Scouting, like the main guy. Yeah. And uh, I said to him, and I've said this to you too, Cam. I was like, I feel like every time we have one of these mega sensation phenoms in recent time, whether it's Crosby, whether it's uh, McDavid, that. Nobody's let us down. They've always, they've all matched yes, the expectations. I know. At some point in time, somebody's going to be a monster bust. I don't know who it is. And I'm not going to sit here and say Connor Bedard is going to be that guy. There's no signs that would ever point towards you even well, thinking injuries, about that. Injuries could have a, of course, anybody could get hurt. I just think when you're, when yeah, you're, but when you're just, that good, mm-hmm. it's hard not to be successful unless you get fucking concussion problems. Right. I just think that they're so good. But to that work. wouldn't be. Considered a bust, in my opinion. Well, I mean, that's well, okay, but you wouldn't, you're not going to get a thousand, twelve hundred points or fifteen hundred points or whatever it is. But if you're, you're not like, on the ice, but if you're playing every game, you're not producing. I'm just saying, like these guys are. That's so good. a bust. Like maybe like the fifth pick is going to be a bust, but when you see Connor do his thing, it's like just if he stays healthy, like I just don't. When you're that good, it's just hard not to be that good in the NHL. He's got some opinion. jacked arms too. He's big man. He's he's thick. His legs are big. 
I see his workout stuff on on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I follow the kid, man. I'm interested in him. He seems like a good dude. I, we listen. We need Sydney. We need fucking Ov. We need another one. Think, Let's go. Do you think um, parents should be posting shit of their kids all the time on Instagram and stuff like that? I don't my, listen. Like baby Gronk. Oh, that's god awful. That is a stupid, horrible. <laughs> Andy, I would fucking strangle you if you did that shit. What do you think of but, baby Gronk's dad? I, fuck both of them. That's how you jinx yourself. When you baby, do that baby Cam. <laughs> god. Let the kid live his life, li- live his youth. Hey, Winnipeg, real quick. Um, what about it? Well, I mean, Sam Gagne said it's not a bad place to play. Oh, okay. If you love hockey. Yeah. They're very passionate about the of game. Of course they are. Doug Armstrong broke it down to me very, very well the other day. Like, about, he's like, there's a handful of teams that don't have state tax where the players want to play. They have an advantage. You have the original six teams. They probably have an advantage. Of course. In terms of, like, destination places, you know. Mm-hmm. So you have the the state free tax places, yep. the Vegas, Floridas, you know Texas. Those, those southern states, Vegas, Texas. Yep. Then you have the original six. Yes. Then you have your three or four or five teams, whatever cities that players have zero interest in going. Like who? Well, what Arizona, do you think they are? Arizona, Winnipeg, Buffalo. Um, uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Columbus. Maybe. Columbus. Um, Although Goudreau. Uh, and, and, well, Edmonton, McDav- Edmonton? Ed- Ed- McDavid's in there. No, though. you got to throw Edmonton in there. you got to throw Edmonton in there. And you think uh, a, uh, uh, Ottawa. If a free agent cam is going to be offered six times seven. Yep. And they could go to Edmonton and play with McDavid, you know, and tell their wife we're going to Edmonton or they can sign in like Chicago, you know. Yeah, so. or Nashville. Or Nashville. There's a lot of good I mean, cities out there. It'd be great to play with McDavid. Yeah, I know, but, but Edmonton's time, tough. To, it's tough, man. And get an American. They're in, they're in a disadvantage. They are, you, especially for the Americans. And then you have the category of everybody else. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, St. Louis to uh, Dallas to Vancouver, Vancouver, Carolina, Washington, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Minnesota. That'd be a cool place to play. Mm-hmm. Minnesota's cool. Oh yeah. But I think there's a, the, the Americans. I honestly like it's t- it's a tough. So can you break you can sell. break it down like that, right? So anyway, yeah, so yeah, Winnipeg, yeah, Blake fine. Wheeler. Now I my, my sources say that the relationship between he and the Jets is not as bad as people make it out to be. It's not as fractured as people make it out to be. If he does get bought out, which if I'm a team who's interested in bringing Blake Wheeler on board, what is he thirty five, thirty six, something like that, thirty seven? I don't know. He's getting up there. He's up there. But if you wanted to bring him on board, and if you know that if you don't like. Why give up something if you can just sign him? Like he's gonna get bought out. I'd wait for him. I'd wait for the buyout, yeah. and just sign him. But I'm told if he gets bought out, it's like a mutual buyout. It's not like hey, the team's like hey, we're buying you out. I think, I think there's communication going on from both sides to try to figure out how to amicably like separate. Separate. Yeah. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Interesting, man. Would you Would you go all in on Hellebuck? Like um, if you're if New I'm, Jersey or something like that. Yeah. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I just look at Aiden Hill. This, but see, I'm just saying. I, I don't know uh, unless and and maybe you put Hellebuck in that category. How old Listen, is he? He's a Vesna winner. Thirty one. Mid twenties. Oh, really? How old's Hellebuck? Mid twenties. Twenty seven. Twenty. Yeah. I, yes. Goalies I, peak. I, I would say peak later on. Anyway. I would say he's 26, 27, 28, 30. He's thirty. Fuck. So he's thirty. Yeah. So okay. So he's thirty. Goalies peak. Just turned later, thirty. Just like defense and peak a little bit later than forwards. Um. Yeah, I, I I I think so. Like, if you're on the brink, like a jersey, I would roll the dice and sign him, depending on what he's what he wants. Mm-hmm. But I, I would I would probably pay a little bit of overpay to get him solidified yeah. in my organization. I mean, goalie, especially jersey, like he bounced around with different goalies here and there. Um, they had he's that established. Kid, they had that kid last year who yeah who dominated who for like, a bit, but then no, he got lit up. I know. He got, <laughs> was in the USHL like a yeah, year or two ago. Yeah, they had a goalie situation. I know. So like. He's an Hollebuck is an established goalie. We've seen it firsthand um, when the Blues played him a lot. I just I, I, listen. I don't know. There's like one or two goalies that I would pay a lot of money. I'd rather give my money like to who? Who's available? Well, there's not a whole lot well, available. But so my do, point is, year? I feel like all these guys are good. They're all capable of playing great for a month or two. You just you need like three of them, <laughs> or you need one guy that's just more consistent. They're all good. I know who's the most consistent. 
They could all stand on their head and own your That's life. That's why Joel Hofer will be a story this year, making, like, the minimum. Maybe. We'll see. He will be. Like, he's. I'm not saying he's going to, like, be an all-star. I'm just saying there's going to be stretches during the year where he's going to play really well. Okay. I mean, the Blues backup goalie is going to play really well. Okay, we'll see. He's not really, <clears throat> But he's not really a backup. Well, he's right now. He's the backup to Jordan Bennington. He is okay. So he, therefore, he's a backup. I think, and if, he, if Jordan Bennington plays well, he's going to play fifty fucking games. One hundred percent. So he's going to be a backup to Jordan Bennington. So therefore, he's a backup. <laughs> so who cares? Hopefully, he does come in and steal a couple games. The backup goalie, like okay. I just think it's, it's like a hot take or something. No, no, not at all. You, you like think Joseph everything's Hofer. a hot take. Are you guys hear that? <laughs> Hofer, hey, clip that off. Hofer, <laughs> Hofer will play. That's going to go viral. Hofer's going to I think it's going to be good. almost like an even yeah. split. Oh, really? Yeah. I hope not. I hope it's not because that means Benner's not playing well. That's not what it means. I don't so you're telling, wait, wait. You're telling me that if Benner, Jordan Bennington plays well, mm-hmm. he's still going to get split. With Joel Hofer, it wouldn't be. It doesn't make it any sense. It wouldn't be an even split, but his numbers last year, I think he led the league in, or he was right there with Hellebuck. In most, games he got suspended at the end, yeah. and it kind of like disrupted that. But he had a career high in uh, games played, games started, and he was right there at the top of the league. I, you're not going to see that this year. Okay, they had Thomas Grice here last year. Yeah, so that was the option. If established backup goalie. If Bennington wasn't going to play. But it's still an established backup goalie. Yeah, but they weren't going to just throw him in. They just kept playing Bennington. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know oh, because they didn't, they didn't care about his, you know, his uh, gradual. Um, they just kept playing his. They just kept yeah, playing, playing better. Bennington. <laughs> and Benner was losing his I think they mind. felt like Bennington had, gave them the best chance to win. And he did. Um, but but the the D in front of Benner, I mean, it was a tough year for Jordan Bennington, man. Like, he, I, I kind of felt what bad What I'm at saying times. is, Hofer is not your, like, Typical backup goaltender coming in. Like, he's got legit number one potential down the road. Okay. Sick. Okay. He won a gold medal with right, Canada. Man. I, I, okay. Like, at it, the it, World like I don't really care about him that much because <laughs> he hasn't done shit yet. Once he starts doing some stuff, mm-hmm. like, we'll break him down. But right now, it's like, okay, it's all hypothetical. He might, the backup goalie might do well. Okay. Well, I, don't we're, think, I don't think anybody out there listening gives a well, fuck. We were talking about goalies. And I'm just so, saying, do you need to pay a guy like that much money? I said, if I'm Jersey, I would pay Hullabuck and get him sealed. A lot of people are picking them to win the cup next year. Jersey? Mm-hmm. I like their team, man. They're young. They're cool. They're fast. They play fucking quick. They got some cool superstars on that team. Of course, I love the organization. So, Travis Green's going there as the an green associate dog. coach. The Green Dog. Good for him, man. Congrats, Travis. Good job, Trav. Hey, Travis, go, congrats. Way to go, so well, I'm getting hungry, Cam. I'm starving, so let's man. Let's wrap interview. it up. Did you bring me anything to eat? No, I bought Brody uh, some Chick Fil A. It was dang good, wasn't it, Brody? And I hooked him up with a couple shirts from First Farm. What's up? What's up? What's up? That's what I do. Andy. I don't know anybody that uh, I, I've never. I didn't even know Chick Fil A serves breakfast. Well, you don't know a lot about food because <clears throat> you don't eat any. I don't eat fast food. Good for you, man. Did they bring it out like right away? Dude, they are so damn organized. Yeah, so sweet. Little cute girl. She's like, hi, how are you, honey? I'm like, what's up? So sweet. Food's dang good. Dang good. Is it fresh? You think it's more fresh? I don't know. Compared to other? I think it's still fast food, but uh, it's a lot, I think it's a little bit healthier. So JVR, James Van Ru- Reemsdyke. <clears throat> James Van Reemsdyke. What did we call him? JVR. No, but what did we... No, we had a nickname for somebody else. Okay, never mind. Yes, Jim. JVR. Jimmy. What's up, Jimmy? Jimmy and He's the He's a hizzy. great dude. Sweetheart of a guy, man. Awesome. Hell of a hockey player. Just a nice, nice dude. Mm-hmm. I like him a lot, and it was a good interview, man. Yeah, totally cool. Good get on that because I like him. Thank a lot. you. He's on the uh, he's on the lake in Minnesota right now. No, he is man. Minnetonka. Minnetonka. I think it's <laughs> Lake Minnetonka, something like that. But probably absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Just a gorgeous. That's situation. the most. That's the best part about playing in the NHL and being successful is that you can just have an incredible oh, off season. God. Just and, and all the guys, everyone we talk to, man, like like no, we got a lake house, we got a lake house, we got a lake house, we got a lake. No shit, because it's just easy entertainment. You look out your window and you have a smile on your face because you're seeing beauty mm-hmm. every single day. I love that. I love water. I love fucking boats. Submarines scare me, <laughs> but I love water. Mm-hmm. And if we keep kicking ass on this podcast, 
We both need to get some sort of lake house somewhere. Get some acreage. Well, I'll probably get one somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I'm I could see myself moving one day out of St. Louis. Okay. <clears throat> I need to be in the higher elevation. I get that. I like mountains, man. I do. I like water. I like mountains. I love it. So. Hair Club and HairClub.com, Cam. Have you checked out our landing page? HairClub.com slash Cam and Strick. Ask about that pill. And let them take your hair game to that next level. Never feel like there's not a solution for you. There's always a solution. Oh, the hardest part is walking through that door. And once you walk through, you're going to be comfortable as hell. And they're going to let you know exactly what they can do for your hair. The payment plans, the different options. They got it all right there at Hans Wyman Hair Club. Hans Wyman and Hair Club. Yep. Hans Wyman is local here, I believe. Yes, it is. Yes. Hair Club, hairclub.com, baby. Check that out. Again, the landing page, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. That is the landing page. First form and firstform.com, Cam. I would not have gotten through my golf outing with you and performed the way I did for seven holes if I didn't have my first form peanut butter lovers bars. Yeah, thank God you ate that because you would have fucking... They melted a little bit in the heat, though. You would have got blown away with the wind. You have no no body weight on you. The wind blows Andy right over, right out of his fucking shoes. Thank God you had that lovely protein shake. Or uh, protein bars. bar. Uh, the protein shakes would have been great too. I almost I, brought I drink the, those every morning. I almost brought the fruits and the greens out there on the on the on the uh, on the course with me, but you can. You just put it, it was just so hot and stuff. Yeah. But, just, you, but you put it in the the, the with the, the ice, cooler. I know. In the first form, little coolies they have. They're oh, dude. I would God. keep ice water in my hot truck in the middle of the summer for three days, and there's still ice. Do you know that, that I left it. I had ice water in my car. That I left in my car at your house when we played golf, and it was a hot day. Yeah. And uh, when I got back to my car, there was still ice, and it's freezing cold water. Dude. Yeah, Andy, I just said three days. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I, I three-upped you before you said that story. You didn't have to say that How story. How hot was because it? Because I said... How hot was it? It was 90 degrees. Yeah. For three days? Yeah. And you still drank it? It's fr- no, I just shook it, and I'm like, damn. And it was ice in there. Oh, I know. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's why I brought it up. And then you repeated a story that wasn't as good. Mm. So you're just wasting people's time. I like your first form shirt you have on right now. That's all I wear. That's, that's all, all you I wear, wear, baby. That's all, all I wear. he wears. That's what I do. <laughs> I am first form. Let's go. Oh, you got to know that hashtag. Use that hashtag, people. Yep. I am first form. Tag us in it. Please when you're wearing it. your first form gear or if you're uh, drinking first form protein, whatever you're doing, eating protein, tag drinking us. protein, in the tag us in that. Yep. Tag them and tag us. I am first form. Yeah, you are. That's the only thing Andy eats is first form stuff. It truly is. It's not. It's the only thing I wear, and it's the only thing you eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true. And we support the sponsors. We, hell right? yeah, I love it. I love everything about it, man. Mm-hmm. You guys got to check it out. Yeah, we need everyone to uh, yep. support those sponsors. Bellman and Bellman.com. At Bellman, you get no what? Swinging dicks. None of that. And what does that mean? This means a guy coming out swinging a dick around. Creeping out your wife, mm-hmm. making it uncomfortable, ripping you off, bragging about himself in the high school days like Andy does, swinging their dick around, man. Bunch of Hoosiers. They, they don't do that at Bellman. Class, class, class. They want you back. They love the people. They make it comfortable and organized, and they get a lot to choose from, Andy. Mm. There is no question about that. Buick GMC on one side of the street. Uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on the other side. Cam, all located where? In Troy, Missouri. Troy. 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 Say hi to Danny, boy. Hey, Danny, dude. What's up, Dale? Hi, Dale. And Kenny. Kenny. The whole crew out there. Ask about the flavored water and sushi. They'll give it to you, which is the truth. Tess on Roofing and TessOnRoofing.com. Cam, Brett Tess on. Give him a shout out. Brett, what up, baby? I'll see you Sunday. Sunday night draft, and then we got a little golf tournament going on. And uh, I tell you what, there's going to be some storms coming up. It's going to be a little hot, but uh, I'm... even in late in the summer when it's usually the desert, there's going to mm-hmm. be, we're going to get rocked here in St. Louis. Do you know that we're a- going to get rocked? Asphalt shingles have uh, essential oils. Yeah, dude. It's like lotion. The, no, it's like skin. Asphalt oh. shingles have essential oils in their um, composition. Yes. And where it can get dried out and brittle if you don't take care of it. Okay. Okay. So that's why you need the greener shingles rejuvenated. That's like the lotion. That's like the there lotion. You go. There you go. So greener shingles rejuvenator, it extends your roof for five years. Yeah, you, know, you put it on cam and it just like moisturizes. Yeah. Plus, you'll save money on your energy bills. Isn't that something? And you'll save money in the long run because you're not going to have to replace so that you, roof. How do you get a hold of these guys? Tessonroofing.com. Go to tessonroofing.com. 
These guys will take care of you. We know them. They're local. Started from scratch. They work their ass off. They do a damn good job. And they work with the insurance companies too, Andy. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. They're well respected here in St. Louis. I'm telling you guys that. Check them out. Get that done. There's going to be some storms coming. There's going to be some hail coming. Well, I'm telling y'all. There's going to be some hail coming. There's going to be some hail. I Did you see the one in Texas? I saw a picture of that lady who, uh, I think she was at Red Rock. Red Rock got rocked, yep. And she um, had hail damage like all over her back. Yeah, no, they were all bleeding, man, at Red Rocks, and it broke all their car windows and stuff. Really? Flash flooded, yeah. What was the concert, do you know? No. But, um, and then Texas, same thing. They had huge golf balls, or not golf ball. Baseball size. Softball size, size yeah. And they look like... They look like they had spikes through them and stuff like that. Very creepy. I've seen that before. And then Texas got rocked by tornadoes and four people died the other day. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, you don't pay attention to things. Well, I didn't hear about that so, one. I did hear about the uh, hail, though. Just worry about the man. draft. I I'll saw, take care of everything I else. Saw all of that. So get about the, ask about the greener shingles. Um, Test on roofing, great relationship with yep. all the major insurance companies, too. So, again, they are a priority with all the major uh, insurance companies, so you know when you use Tess on Roofing that you're, you're all set. TessonRoofing.com. Check a, them out. You're in a great spot yeah. with all of that. And again, Sparks will be back with us in August, Cam. Cool, man. So take a little bit of break from them. You can still use our promo code Cam and Strick if you want to save more money than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Right on. Okay. Damn good. Uh, James Van Riebsdyk. Uh, enjoy this one, man. He's had a great career. Played in Toronto, too. We had some fun with him, man. Talking about a lot of different things. Uh... New Hampshire's finest. He played at New Hampshire. Grew up in New Jersey. He's a Jersey boy, Cam. I know. Let's hear about him now. Jim joins us on the Jim. Cam and Strick podcast. Hairclub.com, baby. Oh, you're damn right. Go to our landing page today. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Regrow, restore, and replace that hair. Don't wait. Now to the interview. Hello? JVR. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? What, what, are you, what, what are you doing? Are you, are you on the lake or what? Yeah, I'm on the lake. I'm out here in uh, Minnesota. Yeah, just uh, yeah, enjoying the summer out here. What lake is that, dude? What do you got going uh, up there? I'm uh, purifying myself in the bodies of uh, Lake Minnetonka or whatever that prince. Uh, we couldn't prince come up with is. that name. <laughs> Minnetonka. <laughs> Minnetonka, <laughs> baby. Minnetonka. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Who all's up there? You got a bunch of uh, a bunch of the boys up there or no? Yeah, there's a lot of guys uh, out here. Um, so Jake Gardner and uh, Justin Hall, they both grew up uh, on the lake pretty much. So I see a lot of those guys get really good, really tight with those guys. So see a bunch of them. Um, and then, yeah, as you know, there's so many hockey guys out here. So you just kind of see everyone at some point or another at different skates and stuff like that. So, so yeah, there's uh, quite a few guys uh, that are out here. What do you got going up there, man? You got to let me guess. Like, uh, you probably got like a, a two boat. A boat to kind of ski, a little ski boat. You got a, like a pontoon. Like, what do you got going? Yeah, I just got the pontoon going uh, out back, just keeping it simple. You can you can ding it up a little bit, and it's mm -hmm. not the end of the world. So I I I, uh, I stick with that. Just stick uh, stick with what's easy and convenient. Can't can't mess that up too oh, much. Oh man, does it say Big Jim on the side of it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Hey, yeah. hey, who calls you Jim? Pronger calls you. I've noticed on every yeah. every, every one of his Instagram posts, he was like, "Looks good, Jim. That's a nice spot." Jim. Totally the Pronger voice, you know. Is he the only guy that's ever oh, called you Jim? So he would call me Jim, and then like, like as a joke, because I, I guess growing up, like, and my, my parents would tell me this later, but like when I was in like six or seven years old playing soccer, like the coaches used to call me Jimmy, and I guess I didn't put together that they were talking to me, so I would just ignore it, and then. I would always kind of ignore it over the years, and then uh, and then my dad, as a joke to this day, calls me Jimmy just because of stuff like that. And then prongs, I don't know, like if what 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 was the original reason why he started calling you that, but it definitely uh, stuck. And it, like you said, I can hear hit exactly how he says it every time you mention his name and that. So it's uh, it's pretty funny. Hey, was he good to you? Uh, you when you uh -huh. came in, like you guys went to the Stanley Cup final, like your first or second yeah. year, whatever it was. He was there. I went to a couple of those games actually, but. Was he was he was he good to you? Was he a dick? Like, what was Prongs like to you? He was awesome. I mean, I remember right away, like that first summer, he moved in and um, and he was getting situated. So we came in basically the same year, but like before the season started, like he uh, invited me over to his house for like a barbecue with some of the guys, stuff like that. That was great. Uh, we were actually stallmates, so like he, again, it was it's kind of funny, like looking back on it, because I think at the time I was probably a little more. Uh, rattled about it but i think it was a good lesson as far as just being organized but like so we were stallmates and like obviously um 
sometimes, you know, like stuff like crosses the lines, maybe some of my stuff was in his, uh, in his area a little bit too much. So I remember coming, uh, coming to the rink or, or coming, going to leave the rink one day. I'm like, wait, where, do, where, I, where are my shoes? Like what's going on here? And like, that was the last straw of him being like, Hey, keep your stall organized, get it out of my <laughs> stall. And my shoes were in the hot tub that day. So, uh, so yeah, no stuff like that, but he, he was good. Like he, I remember even very early on in that first year, like he'd be like, uh, he'd bring me out before practice and he kind of got me into my routine of, uh, of tipping a ton of pucks and trying to get really good at that. So he was, a guy that really um, kind of took me under his wing in that way. Certainly, again, like he, like everyone who knows Prox, he can be a little uh, um, uh, a little uh, ornery, I guess is no. the right word at times. <laughs> not not Prox, right? But no, but he uh, but he was great, and like he uh, again showed me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things about what it takes to try to have success over a long career, like he obviously had. So I was able to learn a lot of stuff uh, from him, and there was obviously quite a few guys on that or on those early Philly teams that were great like that. Oh, yeah. So when so when he has a barbecue and he invites you over. Does he like make you pay for like the barbecue <laughs> and the charcoal? Hey, BYOB. <laughs> Bring your own no, steaks. I, Give him twenty no, bucks you know, to be they, at the house. They had some of the uh, the trainers bringing over some some drinks and some waters and stuff like that. I think early on, but no, no, I was I, I got off. I was I was off the hook there, so I was I was fine. That's <laughs> awesome. That's hilarious. He he was good to a lot of guys. Yeah, he br- he, he brought the Shen brothers here to town to golf and watch video one yeah. year and stuff like that. So. He's, uh, it's good to have veterans like that when you're young, man, you know, that Damn reach right. out and, and make you feel comfortable. Yeah, I, absolutely. You said it. And I think, again, like, looking back, like, I was lucky to have just a great group that we had of guys that I played a long time because, again, I think it's so important to kind of uh, – people can tell you all, all day long what to do and things like that, but just being around guys and watching how they go about their business and how to act professional and how to make your sure you're prepared for every practice and game and things like that and find that consistency. Like I had a ton of guys like him, uh, Danny Briere, um, Kimo Tiemann and Scotty Hart and all just guys. I mean, the list goes on and on. Brian Boucher, Jody Shelley. These guys were so good to me in my first couple of years and really make you just uh, feel comfortable. I mean, obviously again, it's hard enough as it is, uh, making the transition from uh, college to professional hockey, but uh, to have guys like that in your corner to, to kind of show you the ropes and uh, talk you through different things and uh, make sure that uh, there's a certain standard and a way to do things is, and how to act, how to dress, stuff like that. So I was, uh, yeah, I was lucky to, to have guys like that. For yeah. Sure early on. Good group of guys right hey, there. Jody for Shelley, sure. baby. Hey, what, what made you settle in Minnesota for your off season home? Cause you're from the East coast, right? How'd you get introduced to Minnesota? Yeah, so uh, so I played at the U.S. program, and I had a few uh, different buddies uh, from my time there, particularly to uh, Mike Holful and uh, Brennan Vargas, who I was really tight with, and I would come out here and um, visit these guys all the time. And uh, growing up in Jersey, like all my buddies that I grew up with, like they were all moving on to like New York City or Philly, so it wasn't really a obvious place to to find a spot to to live in the summer or train in the summers back home. So. Um, I had the uh, introduction through those two guys, and then uh, after playing with Matt Carl my uh, first year, first couple of years in Philly, he had me out to his house on uh, Lake Minnetonka, and um, yeah, that uh, that kind of sold it for me. So I've been out here ever since. Um, it's been like a little over ten years now. So uh, so yeah, I've, I've loved it out here. It's great. Mikey, great place to be. Mikey Hopeful, man, I played with him in Albany. Lovely, yeah, that, that, that's lovely. That's right. So yeah, Mike Hopeful, and then uh, and Mike Siswell was my uh, Sissy. college. Yep, love was my college line eight, and uh, lived with him. He lived actually with me for a few years out at the house here. Great um, guys, man. In. So yeah, so just yeah, awesome, uh, awesome guys, and got to spend a lot of time with those guys out here in the summers, and. Um, yeah, definitely a lot. Fucking of fun. Jersey, you're a Jersey boy. Hell yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, we're at exactly. in Jersey. Like, where at? Where'd you grow up? So I grew up. Uh, I don't know if you know where Red Brook is. That's like the bigger, like more well-known city uh, close to where I grew up. But I grew up in Middletown, um, right around the corner from there. So the best food up, ever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Best best pizza, best uh, yep. stuff like that. Can't get a good slice of pizza out in the Midwest, really. But. Uh, but, uh, no, do you notice that though? Jersey roots. Do you know? Yeah. Oh do, yeah. Yeah. Like seriously though, if people people complain because we got barbecue down here and stuff like that, but yeah. Jersey has the best food in the United States. It does. Uh, Jersey, I'm, New York a, does. For, yeah, I think it's obviously that heavy. Uh, for sure, the Italian spots, but that that Italian uh, influence and all the mom yeah. and pop kind of pizza shops uh, around the corner from uh, from where I grew up and things like that. But uh, yeah, definitely will say I don't think I found a slice quite like you can get. Uh, in jersey hey so, did you grow up with shaddy like do you guys play youth hockey together yeah so shaddy and i yeah grew up battling it out against each other and then uh 
playing together at the uh, at the U.S. program together and a lot of USA hockey stuff. But uh, growing up, our teams uh, had a had a little bit of a rivalry, so there was uh, probably some parents fighting in the stands at a few of those games, and uh, <laughs> the games would get pretty chippy. Shadi's team was pretty stacked. I think they had a ton of guys going on to uh, to play in college and stuff like that. So they uh, they would probably beat us on the scoreboard a lot of times, but uh, we try to we try to even it out a little bit with uh, with some of the extra stuff. So uh, it was uh, definitely some some uh, wild atmospheres at some of those games. Shattenkirk, by the way, for all y'all out there, oh, yeah. just so you know, because yeah. we. We sometimes forget that we're talking to an audience. <laughs> Everybody knows Shatt- Shatt- Is that his name, Shattenkirk? Well, yeah. I it thought is. it was Shatty. Well, I think along. somebody <laughs> might not understand that. Answer, hey, so, you know. hey, why New Hampshire? Like the University of New Hampshire. Hey, do they still they still have a hockey program going right now, right? Are they still strong? <laughs> like, I mean, you came out of there, but like you could have gone anywhere you wanted. Like, why'd you pick there? Yeah, so coming coming uh, down to it, I guess at the end, it was uh, between like UNH and then Michigan and. Ultimately, I think um, being a little bit closer to home and being like, again, the, the ride from my parents up from Jersey was like five and a half, six hours. So that was a little bit of a factor. And then, yeah, I thought I'd get a chance to uh, to get a little bit more of an opportunity as far as some of the, the role I get to play right away. And I really just love the love the campus, things like that. The coaching staff I thought was great. And um, yeah, just a combination of all those things. So we they had a good, obviously, a uh, unbelievable atmosphere and stuff at the game so it was always a fun place uh to play and things like that but uh yeah that's kind of I, di- I didn't really grow up with um too many in jersey obviously not a ton of college hockey programs uh locally so you didn't really have that same sort of atmosphere or any sort of allegiance anywhere to, to go into it so uh going through that whole recruiting uh process to see what these different schools are all about and all the different history and tradition and stuff like that that was uh that was pretty fun uh, to go through that and visit some of these places and see uh, see the atmospheres at some of these uh, buildings and stuff. So it, uh, still, is definitely a, a, a great decision. I, I'm happy with. So, h- how was your upbringing growing up in Jersey? Like, what did your mom and dad do? Like, when did you really start playing hockey and realize that you were really good? Like, how, how was your upbringing? Yeah, so just we grew up uh, like in, in Middletown, kind of close to to the beach. Um, yeah, my dad worked for a, a shipping company, this company, Mark Terminals. But, uh, yeah, both my parents were super involved in just driving me and my brothers everywhere for hockey and uh, and things like that. And, um, yeah, just uh, never – they never really pushed us too far into it as far as, like, as you can – some some of the parents you hear horror stories of, but my oh, parents yeah. were great. Like, they – whatever we wanted to do, they just wanted us to do something we were passionate about. And, obviously, it happened to be – hockey so uh again they were great like it's not as uh easy as far as um how close everything is so when you're playing uh travel hockey growing up so like lots of lots of time in the car and the the club that uh that i played for was like 40 minutes each way so like a lot of uh looking back on that now it's uh you realize how much of a sacrifice it is now that i have two of my own kids it's like yeah that's a lot of time that my parents spent um in the car and um supporting us and uh and doing that. But I think, again, one of the biggest things for Jersey hockey is a guy like Jim Dowd, who yeah, Jimmy Dowd uh, really, really put uh, Jersey hockey on the map. And then <laughs> Hell yeah. even someone uh, like Lou Lamorello, who uh, did so much to really try to help grow the game. And he would always uh, was a big part of uh, having the Devils host the high school state tournament and stuff like that. So I got to have a little bit of a relationship with him. And even in my high school days and getting to play with him uh, in Toronto or play for him in Toronto um was awesome but uh but yeah i think yeah that was kind of uh i guess how my route went with that so just really really it was, it was, it was interesting though i think there was like a five-year stretch there where again obviously jersey wasn't necessarily a hockey hopper but i think there was like a five-year stretch right around when i got drafted where there was a first rounder uh from new jersey every single year so i think it was like bobby ryan bobby sanganetti myself john carlson kyle palmieri so there's been some guys over the years that have come out of uh, out of Jersey, and I think it uh, definitely is a lot more competitive and a lot more players than people would think uh, coming out of a smaller uh, state like that. So, Andy, when we got Lou on, he tweeted at me. James, he did. He said, damn, you guys got the big boys on. <laughs> yeah. I go, fuck, exactly. yeah, we do. Hey, hey Jimmy Dowd. Dowd. Hey, dude, Jimmy Dowd's so goddamn funny. He had OCD, 
and I'd go up to his room. He'd have his own room, <laughs> and I would like move things around in his in his in his room, and he just like wouldn't even know what he's doing it, but he'd fix it. I just walk around his room and and, ch- and change different things, and he'd walk behind me, telling me a story, and he'd fix everything that I changed. And it's crazy. I loved him, dude. He's one of my favorite teammates ever. Jimmy Dowd. We're gonna get him on, by the way. Too. Oh yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, he was great. He was great. Even like again talking about like giving back to Jersey hockey. Like he would host like. Uh, and also the game for uh, the two counties that uh, he grew up in Ocean County. I grew up in Monmouth County, the county over, but like a, a little local high school all-star game to just try to get guys a little bit more exposure and stuff like that. So, again, another guy who's been really good to me uh, over the years, particularly early on, just uh, kind of being a, a mentor and things like that. So I definitely have a, a lot of respect for him and uh, his family. Hey, yeah. where does uh, Van Reemsdyke come from? Yeah, like, where, that, I, don't, I don't know anybody else named Van Reemsdyke. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. got to call you JVR. They don't even call you Van Reemsdyke all the time. So where's that name? Where's the origin yeah, from? So, yeah, so Van Reemsdyke is, is Dutch. So uh, we're uh, very proudly Dutch. My uh, my dad still has a lot of family over there. I'm, I'm actually uh, the, the first uh, American-born on that side of the family. So uh, wow. everyone else, so my dad actually grew up a little bit over there and came over, over here in like middle school and high school. But, um, Does he have an accent, but yeah, uh, he, he actually doesn't. So I think he still understands it a little bit, but, uh, and speaks it. Okay. But he doesn't obviously out of practice a lot, just being over here. So I think every time he gets, uh, goes back over to see some of his family, he gets a little bit of a crash course on uh, trying to, Trying to see if he if he still remembers any of it. But, you got you got uh, a Dutch you, you, got, you got a Dutch oven in your like, what, what's what's going on with the Dutch? Like what do the Dutch do? What are they known <laughs> they for? <built> New York. <laughs> the, the, the Dutch or my my dad actually was up early yesterday watching the the uh, what was it the the um, Nations League soccer. I think uh, Holland was playing Italy in that, so he was. Uh, he was tuned into that. I think they lost three two, but uh, we're still that's that's our that's a bucket list trip for the Van Riemsdyks is uh, to go over there and hopefully see a see a match of uh, the Dutch or uh, yeah the Netherlands the national team playing and that's pretty cool. So that might be one when uh, when we're retired we shoot over there and try to check that out. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you get that next contract, you might be able to afford to get over yeah, there, yeah, JVR. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll help you with that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man, I've got one son playing hockey. I, I couldn't imagine having two. Yeah. Like I don't know how these parents do it, man. I mean, it's. Yeah. I could not have more than one kid like playing. There's just not enough time in the day to be able to get from point A to point B. So how'd you guys do it? How did Trevor end up being good as well? Like, and you, you said brothers. So is there another one besides Trevor as well or no? Yeah. So there was, there's three of us on the oldest, uh, obviously Trevor, a couple of years younger than, than, uh, than me. And then our youngest brother, uh, Brendan, who actually just uh, stopped playing, um, this past, uh, this past winter. And then now he's, uh, um, working at a local rink, just coaching a couple teams there, doing some uh, um, skill development stuff with other guys on the side too. So kind of, uh, we're, we're definitely a hockey family. So he's, uh, he's jumping fully into that now and he's excited about, uh, about all that. But uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's definitely when you look at uh, the sets of brothers and stuff, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty lucky to have all been able to play at uh, a high level. Um, I'll play division one in college and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's definitely pretty cool to, to see that. And obviously a lot of support from the, from our parents and, and our family to help us, uh, to get to that spot. Yeah. I love it, man. That's crazy. I mean, you think about it and now you hear about your like family background and the fact that all you guys made it to the NHL is kind of, is kind of crazy. Uh, are they all spending time in Minnesota with you in the summertime or are they spread out all over? Yeah, we're still a little spread out. So my, uh, my, uh, my middle brother, Trevor, um, he's in uh, just outside of Boston in uh, Newburyport, and then my youngest brother Brandon, he's uh, he's just at home in uh, in Jersey, um, just getting kind of uh, getting all settled in with the new job that he has now and uh, things like that, like I mentioned. So, uh, so yeah, he's excited about the, about that uh, transition. Hey, listen, we got to start a rumor here, at JVR, because Patty Kane's <laughs> a free agent. Yeah. You guys haven't played together since back in the day at the at the U.S. program. <laughs> Maybe with the Olympic team or something back in 2014 or something. So where, where's he going to sign? Yeah, first off, because I know you know, like, what's he going to do? He's got the hip injuries coming back from that. Yeah. But but uh, are, are you looking forward to a fresh start? Like, what are you thinking in terms of what you want to do? Yeah, no, for me personally, yeah, it's, it's exciting. I think, um, obviously, again, getting a chance to, to have a new opportunity, a new experience. I'm um, definitely looking forward to that. I think um, 
again, I think over the course of your career, you put a lot of time in as far as, uh, again, taking care of yourself and doing the right thing so that when you're at this age that you still, I'm 34 now, but I still feel great. The body still feels great. It's still fun for me. Uh, all the training and all the stuff that goes into the day to day of, uh, trying to be the best player you can be. So I'm, I'm excited, uh, about at least for that stuff, how I feel at this point and how, how my body feels, how I feel about my game, stuff like that. So coming into free agency here, uh, exciting to see what kind of opportunities are going to be out there. And um, yeah, just uh, taking it one day at a time uh, going into that. So it should, uh, should be exciting. If you have a lot of opportunities, which you probably should, do you look at the United States and say, man, you know what? Like I, I played so long. I played in cold, cold weather markets. Like I kind of want to go down to Florida. Or maybe I want to go somewhere <laughs> in the South. Like, do you think that way? Because I think a lot of people are thinking that way, you know, more and more. Or is it year. like a contending team? Or is like it like a contending team? Like, you know, like, what do you, like, what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, I think for me, it's just uh, like, like, it's going to be most about the, the on ice experience. So like how I would fit in with the team and obviously wanting a chance to win are huge. So those are two are probably the, the biggest factors. Obviously you want to go somewhere where they want you and they feel like they have a role for you to play. And then um, again, I've been at it for, this will be my 15th year coming up and we had a great run, obviously my uh, rookie year in Philly, but still haven't had a, a run like that since. So wanted to get a chance to, to, to be in an opportunity where you think that, that's in cars would uh, would be awesome. So just again, just that's uh, trying to trying to manage through all these different factors, like you mentioned, uh, to find the best fit is uh, is yeah what I'm trying to do. But ultimately, again, uh, no matter where it is, it's just a matter of trying to find that place where I feel like it's uh, going to be the best best uh, with how my game fits in with uh, with a certain team and organization and um, a chance to win. Obviously, as well. So just trying to to figure all that stuff out. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So you and Patty can go one two overall in the draft in two thousand seven. You you should have gone first overall, just so you know. I, I, I was thinking the same you know, thing. You should have gone first. They got Jimmy. that. You know, they got I, that I, wrong, I Jimmy. I can't, I can't argue with the pick that they made based on the, <laughs> based on that, right? So he's uh, he's 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 they've done okay. They did okay. So that, that was uh, you did all right. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but you guys played a year together at the program, though. Like how. Like, what's he like, man? I really, really break him down, like as a person, as an individual, just going out, hanging yeah. out, no cameras, no. He's just Patty Kane. Like he just seems like such a cool, down to earth dude. Is he is he fun to hang out with or what? Oh yeah, for sure. Like you said, just like a normal, great guy. And I would say just the one of the biggest thing that just sticks out with him, even to this day. Like obviously, still consider him a good friend and try and keep in touch uh all these years but uh just how much he loves the game and how much time and effort and um energy he wants to put in like to continue to play and to continue to get better i mean like you the guy's pretty much won everything and accomplished everything you'd want to accomplish in a career but he's still like hungry for for more and hungry to to want to keep uh kind of growing as a player and evolving and continue to play at a high level. So that's over the years, like that's something that's, it's funny because I think as you get older, you realize sometimes that that gets a little jaded on, uh, on certain, certain guys. And obviously again, it's a, uh, it can be mentally demanding and stuff like that, but he's for sure someone who you could tell that he loves the game, loves to be at the rink, loves to be on the ice and stuff like that. So I think obviously that's why a big part of why he's been able to have so much success um, over his career. Yeah. He might want to, be next to Connor Bedard, too, coming up here. You never know. <laughs> Think about that. Hey, let me ask you something, though, man. You played in Toronto. You played in Philly. Two big markets, one in Canada and one not. Like, what's the difference between, like, leaving practice and going places, things like that, the way you're treated? Like, they're both pretty hardcore, but, like, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, I would say um, you could probably get away from things a little bit more. Um, in Philly, you're under the microscope uh, a little bit more in Toronto. But that being said, like I've never had a bad experience uh, as far as how I've been treated by uh, any of the fans or away from the rank there, uh, stuff like that. Even to this day, like I probably anytime if I get recognized at a certain place or a random place, whatever it may be, it's it's always about uh, about more than likely than not my time in uh, Toronto. So you never got chirped um, anywhere you went in Toronto. You never got chirped by a fan. No, no, I it was, it was, I, I, I can honestly say I was pretty much uh, off the radar for, uh, for some of that stuff. I never had a bad experience uh, like that. So like, like nothing like where it was like, whoa, like this is like 
crazy intense. Cam, I just uh, I like, just read you the, the the friendliest countries in the world, and Canada was on yeah, there. Not when it comes to hockey, homie. Okay, <laughs> they can act like they're friendly all they want. But what there. about what about Philly though? Like you're in line oh. to get your cheese. <laughs> yeah, you get a cheese. You're steak. trying to get a cheesesteak, <laughs> yeah. and like you know, the guy's all upset about something that happened two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago, three years ago. <laughs> What were you thinking? What were you thinking? Hey, man, is there more pressure? Like, listen, break it down. Like, when you come in as a high pick, like second overall pick, you know, and you mentioned there were veterans around there too, but still, you know, like the fans, they, they, you're drafted second overall. Like, I saw it here when Eric Johnson came oh, yeah. in or even like Petro, fourth overall. Like, they, they expect you to take that franchise to the next level. Is, is there more pressure coming in as a high pick or when you're playing under a big – contract a big free agent deal like describe are they, are they different like describe the two yeah you know that's uh that's a that's a good question i think for me like it was it was obviously the kind of like a double-edged sword to this so like i came in and like i mentioned all those veteran guys were around so even though i was a higher pick like i had to wait um my turn as far as earning an opportunity whereas i feel like it, and usually when teams get higher picks like they're in a certain trajectory where they don't have a ton of veteran guys and you kind of have to get thrown in figure out a lot of you got to figure out a lot of things on your own probably but you also get a lot more opportunity right away so um i'm happy with the way that it went for me in the sense of i had obviously it was a little bit more of a slower curve i think to to get to where i wanted to be as a player but i think i had just so many good tools around me um as far as like i mentioned the guys that i had there and the pressure wise like i there was Again, there was guys that were above the the depth chart and, and a couple of rungs higher on the ladder for certain situations. So, um, so yeah, you had to kind of uh, earn earn more of your opportunity, wait wait a little bit longer to get that bigger chance uh, to to kind of really prove uh, what you can do. So, yeah, I don't know. I would say in that sense, it's obviously different team to team and situation to situation, but. Um, yeah, I would say that's for, for my own personal situation. I'm glad I had, uh, even though it took maybe a little bit longer to, to get a chance to really spread my wings, I think I'm happy with uh, getting the guys that I got to learn from um, and really kind of give myself a good foundation of uh, what it took to to be successful and to try to have success over a, a long period of time. Dude, you almost got 1,000 games, 300 goals, 600 Almost points, 700 like, geez, points. 700 points. Like, dude, you're doing pretty damn good. Live at Lake Monotaka. Monotaka, like you're, you're part. Everybody wants to hang out with you. He's, he's got the boat. Like, come on now. Hey, did you did did you play under Kyle Dubas? No, so I I he was there. Um, my I think my last couple of years, but uh, but assistant. Yeah, he was more. Uh, I think okay. he was assistant GM, doing a lot more stuff with the Marlies then. But uh, yeah, I remember when when he. I think he took over the summer that I was going to be a free agent. So, um, yeah, so he was uh, good about just kind of. Wishing me, wishing me well, and giving giving uh, my agent and I at the time the the heads up uh, as far as what they were thinking. So I think uh, for me going into that free agency, like there was less of that sort of emotional pull of again. I, I loved playing in Toronto, loved everything about being a Leaf, like things like that. But uh, knowing that that was off the table, it kind of lets you look at things a little bit more clearly. I think going into free agency than having kind of this emotional piece kind of pulling at you a little bit where you uh, really kind of enjoyed where, where you were at and where things were, uh, how things were um, in the last few years before that. Jimmy, he, he probably would have given you $11 million dude, he to gave stay. You, yeah, dude, I mean, a what do you think? He would have given you a 15 year deal, 11 and a half. Just tell him what you want. He'll give it to you. <laughs> and then, like, then I'll hang out with you too. <laughs> <laughs> you could be best buddies. <laughs> Come on, we could be friends. Hi. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's all good. We're, we're just chirping, man. It's all good. Yeah. Hey, but oh, about, but about Lou and I played for Lou for a long time and he drafted yeah. me and I just, I, I love that man so much. How was he with you? Like what? What does he do differently than maybe other GMs do? I know he's very intimidating, and he's about that that crust on the front of your fucking jersey. And I know it's kind of corny and cliche when he comes in that first meeting and says that, but he means it. And so, what? How, what'd you? What was your takeaway from from working with Lou and uh, comp compare him to other GMs that you know? Yeah. So first and foremost, like I remember meeting Lou when I was like thirteen years old, a freshman in uh, high school. He was hosting like a. I think it was like some sort of uh, high school hockey, like luncheon or something. He did like one a month throughout the course of the season. But even then, from then, even to this day, like just like that presence that he carries about him and anyone who's kind of met him and knows him probably knows what I'm talking about, but he just has that kind of uh, 
Oh yeah. That aura, that presence about him that he has where he walks around and just the very professional um, guy. But like, again, I think the thing that I love the most about playing for him was just, just, it's, it's all about the hockey. So like, he doesn't want to like, yep. there's the, no distractions, no anything else. So like it's, everyone has a job to do. And he always talks about the orchestra as sure as you know, Cam. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> with that. So, so I was a, a flute very, player. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the, yeah, he's got his kind of, uh, different uh stuff about that and obviously some of the other stuff like the haircut and the facial hair and things like that but tucked in jersey um, i think again it's it's all I, looking back now just like when you kind of like i never had a problem with stuff like that but just seeing like get, like just giving a little bit of your give a little bit of yourself to a to a team um philosophy and things like that like i i get the reasons why that he was why he likes uh some of those sorts of things and um yeah, just like his attention to detail, like it, as I'm sure you know too, is like just just the little things are big things, and and uh, and just yeah, just and one day at a time, never getting too far ahead of yourself. But yeah, he's still a guy like just like he, he he'd be great. I mean, even stuff like if he see if he's out for rest out for dinner at the same restaurant as uh, some of the guys. Like I mean, again, mo- most guys would think of it as an intimidating sort of thing, but he'd be like the first guy there to come over say hi and just check in on guys and stuff like that so um, like he was looking at your glass too just so you know <laughs> yeah maybe that was what he was like doing come right. on now. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, how many glasses of wine was that oh my god <laughs> no, if i but, saw lou at a yeah. restaurant i'd be like we're getting the fuck yeah. out of here <laughs> no no but yeah he was always good with stuff like that i mean there was definitely uh times too where like you see these guys on the team there and uh would pick up their bill up there with their wife or something oh, wow. so there's stuff like that where he's like just always wanted to take care of the guys and taking care of uh the team and um yeah, I just I had such a great experience uh, playing for him, and um, yeah, just just <laughs> even to this day, like love every time I get a chance to catch up with him and see him. And um, he yeah, listens. He listens. Again, by the way, a, oh yeah, he, he's had a lot of uh, success over a long period of time, and uh, there's a reason for it. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, he's obviously uh, been through a lot of different uh, eras and generations uh, of the game, and. Um, He's definitely that type of guy as, as, as demanding as he can be for certain things. I think he's, he's the type of guy who would maybe be like, if you ever find yourself in any sort of trouble, he'd be a, oh. he'd be one of your first calls to, oh, yeah. to, 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 to call him. So, Big um, time. yeah. He's listening by by the way too, yeah. just so you know. So is so is Bozy. <laughs> so Bozy. Yeah, oh yeah. Bozy. Hey, Bozy, Bozy. Th- Bozy thinks he's not co- he yeah. thinks he's not coming on. He's coming on oh, one of these. We days. love him. Hey, man. hey, listen, yeah. you pl- you play with Bozy and Phil Kessel, man. Like <laughs> did you just go to the rink laughing every day? I mean, this guy's winning his third Stanley Cup. People didn't even know he played for Vegas. I know. They're like, What? <laughs> Phil Kessel, he plays for Vegas. Like describe the experience playing with him. Did you guys hang out a lot away from the rink too? Yeah, so like particularly in like those first uh, couple of years in uh, in Toronto where we were all single and stuff like that. So like every dinner, we like night before games, we'd have a crew of like five or six guys that uh, would always go for dinners and uh, got like after games, like a, a bunch of guys that would go out together. So I got to know obviously those guys uh, super well and owe a lot of uh, my success to those two guys. So especially Bozy, I mean, we were pretty much attached at the hip for like six years playing together and i think we uh played off each other so well and just um just were think always on the same uh kind of wavelength um with how the game w- w- should be played and things like that so i definitely had a lot of uh, a lot of fun playing with uh with those guys and obviously both those guys getting a chance to 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 win a cup and in phil's case now three so uh i'm sure i'm sure he won't be shy to point that out uh next time uh, <laughs> next time i talk to him but uh no, I'm uh, definitely happy for the success of those guys have had. So, like, Phil, though, like, he's got, like, a unique reputation, you know? Like, he kind of got bashed here and there for being lazy, the hot dog thing. But then you <laughs> but then you break his career down. He's like, this son of a bitch doesn't miss games. Never gets like, hurt. Like, it's freaky. Yeah. Like, was he just, is he, and he could dunk, too, by the way. Like, he could dunk. <laughs> like, he's an athlete. He look like Have one. you seen him dunk Have before? you seen him dunk? I, I've never seen him dunk, uh, dunk but uh, we used to like, go back and forth. Like he, we would always say who was the better athlete. Like we were gonna have some sort of decathlon with like basketball. I never came about. I think he got maybe a little too uh, intimidated or something. <laughs> we'll see if we can get that going. But like you said, he's a he's a freak athlete. Like super powerful, strong. And I think ultimately, again, speaking of uh, speaking of just 
uh, him, like you talk about never missing games. Like he just loves to play the games. Like he loves, loves the games like that. Maybe some of the other stuff he doesn't uh, necessarily love as much around that. that but uh, as far as like being a gamer and uh, getting out there and playing all the games, I remember him in his, in his classic voice. Like he'd look over to me sometimes and be like, James, I, I just like playing the games. eh?" Like, <laughs> he, 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 he would say that all the time. So he was, he was classic. Like, Oh man. Like, you could go on and on with some of the stuff with him just like before the games, like what he'd say, like, you know, I think before the, before the game is the big thing, he'd always tell me and Bozy, like we, we'd be about to be walk, about to go walk out for the game. And he goes, you guys know the plan tonight. Give me the rock. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. So, so he was obviously again, he got that, uh, that confidence to him and, uh, yeah, it's had a great career, uh, so far to this point. And, um, yeah, a lot of success that he's had. So, I mean, I think, what is he close to a thousand points now? I want to say oh, too, dude. obviously the, the yeah. Iron Man streak speaks for itself, but uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely a gamer and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to get a chance to play. Hey, what do you, for, hey, for what, many years, you've yeah. been, you've been banged up pretty good injury wise. You know what I mean? Like most people have. Although you had a stretch there where you hardly ever you, miss games, man. Like, but what do you, what do you no. take of like a guy like Phil Kessel playing that many games in a row and not getting injured? Like, how do you, as a, as a guy that's been in the league for 15 years, he almost got 1,000 games. Like, how do you look at somebody like that and say, how the fuck did you not get hurt? Seriously, it's mind-boggling. Yeah, you know what? It is. There's, some, there's probably a little bit of luck in there, but I would say a lot of it, it has to do with your hockey sense and your smarts. Because, I mean, if you look around at a lot of the top players, like, a lot of those guys, they're never really in, like, those vulnerable situations. They're so good at knowing what's, what, what their uh, environment is around them on the ice. So, like, they know – how much time they have or where their blind spots are, things like that. So I think it's, there's a lot of uh, strategy or hockey sense involved in some of that, of just be, being able to put yourself in positions to not be uh, vulnerable. And um, like what though? Yeah. Like, like Flamingo when they shoot from the point, like how do you avoid it? <laughs> well, you, though? You, Keith Yandel you, you, could do it. How the about, fuck do you avoid that? <laughs> yeah. You know, you can talk about some of those things. I don't know as much about that. I mean, for me, like most of my injuries have been like in front of the net, you don't see the puck, you get hit with it, yeah. you break a bone and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, just like, again, like, you know, like you, you, there's certain guys, you obviously, uh, the more you watch, like you realize, Oh wait, this guy's on the highlights getting blown up again. Like what, what, why, like what's going on? But like, I think the guys that are smart and have good hockey sense and things like that, like they're, and obviously again, like there's other stuff like maybe blocking a shot or whatever, that can be a little bit flukier depending on where it hits you. But like, if you're not in these vulnerable spots to take, like take uh hits when you're not expecting it or whatever, you're always in a good uh, position or using uh body positioning wise and things like that. I think you can kind of, again, manage some of the wear and tear that you might have to, uh, go through and I think there's again like like a lot of the a lot of the top guys like you never really see them get hit too hard That's right. and I think yep. a lot a lot of that is just because again they're so they're smart and they know they're so aware of their surroundings and they know how to play and be be uh, productive and successful and just kind of uh yeah just always in in a good position listen I've seen you take a puck to the face oh Oh. And you scored on it. Yeah, only, only two players have ever seen do that. You and Keith Kachuk. Yeah, goddamn right. O, o, Oshie hit Big Walt in the face, yeah. and he scored on it. Yeah. It, may, yeah. it may have been like a historic goal, too, or it something. Was. It was. <laughs> something yeah. like that. Oh, but but what's, that. what's the most uh, painful injury you've ever had? Wow. Um, I was, I'm trying to think what I'd uh, put, put for that. Um, nothing that really jumps out anything worse than some of the other ones i would say actually there was a time i got hit in the face and didn't score Bozy got me it just kind of got deflected in minnesota I, I like broke my nose got hit in the side i'd say that one was kind of uh aggravating but for the most part i've been fairly lucky a few broken bones but those never are really too crazy bad it's just kind of more more the shock of it of anything but uh yeah injury wise i've been fairly lucky that way where it's been a couple broken bones like that but nothing nothing too uh too bad, uh, too gruesome. Hey, what you? What, what were you thinking when guys like uh, Matthews and Marner and, the, and those guys came in? Like, like what? What was your first impression of those two? Like, well, I remember the first. Uh, I'm trying to think with like with Mitch. It was amazing. Like, so he came. So he got drafted. He was drafted before Austin was, but I remember him in training camp, and you could kind of see like, okay, like the the brain that he had right away jumped out, 
and just some of his edges and things like that. But the jump that he made from right after they drafted him and then they sent him back, I think, to junior to the next year was like, it was like this guy was playing like a like a 1990s Red Wing style. Like it was unbelievable, like how he was able to control the game as a winger and always finding ways to give himself kind of space to get the puck with a uh, full speed. So like, and then he obviously, I got a chance to play with him a lot. Those uh, last couple of years I had in Toronto. So like we had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun uh, playing together, me, him and Bozy. So that was uh, great. And then with Austin, I remember uh, I got to skate with him right before uh, the world cup that year for the first time. You could tell right away, just how the, the puck sort of always would like stick to him. He'd always find a way to, to pull it out of someone's feet or when he goes into like a one-on-one and the puck's bouncing all over the place, he'd find a way to get it under control so easily. And then obviously from day one, his shot has been pretty amazing. But I think those guys too, like we were excited to get those guys because we knew how much better they were going to make our team right away. And then just seeing how those guys have, uh, have, have kind of developed this chemistry that they have now, where I think they both bring something a little bit different to the table and are able to complement each other so well where they bring out the best in each other. So I think those guys are uh, pretty lucky to have each other and uh, play together. So, okay, so Austin Matthews is a young kid. When did he become the superstar? And when did he start hanging out with fucking Bieber and shit like that? And were you guys in the locker room like, fucking, fucking Matthews hanging out with Bieber again? Like, oh, oh boys, the young kid's hanging out with these celebrities. Like, were you in the mix on that? Or were you just like, he's just got to do his own thing. He's in his, his own world. You know what? That was that was the year after I left, I think, that uh, those guys all, uh, that Bieber started coming to the games like that and hanging out with some of those guys, so. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a year after my time, but, uh, that's, that's, that's definitely pretty cool to have a guy like that in your corner Fuck yeah. and, uh, and, and, uh, showing you the ropes a little bit and some other aspects of, uh, of life. So, uh, that's, uh, that's gotta be a fun, uh, fun time for those guys. And like Drake was, Dra- Dra- was, was, was Drake coming around <laughs> back <laughs> betting on everything, losing bets. He was, he was, uh, he, uh, obviously he has that, uh, like whatever that, like job or whatever with the Raptors, whatever you want to call it, ambassador. So he was. He was around here and there. I actually lived in the same uh, building as him uh, one, my, one, uh, in Toronto. There. So, like, for he was there for one of the years. But uh, that's, like, that next level of, uh, of like, superstardom when you sure. see how a guy like that, like, like the security that he has to have and things like that. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's next level. Hey, listen. So, Babcock comes in. <laughs> well, like, did you get along with him? Like, honestly, like, what, what, was, what was it like playing for him? And then when all that shit went down, when he's having like uh, Marner like rank the players, who had, I was gonna that was gonna be my first question for you. Who had the worst work at yeah, work ethic on the sure. team? You know, I wanted you to like let us know. Was it Bozy or who? Who was it? But Phil. but uh, or Phil? Yeah, exactly. But like Babcock, like it just up. seemed like a strange fit with uh with with that group of players from the from the very get go. Like especially once once Lou got out of there. I know you weren't you weren't there for for the Dubis experience and stuff. But what what about you and Babcock? How how did you guys mix? Yeah, so I think ultimately with uh, with me and Babs, like I think he definitely understood some of my strengths as a player. I, I wish I would have had maybe a little more opportunity to to kind of expand my game, show what I could do a little bit more. But I think ultimately, like he put me in a really good position um, to succeed for some of what my strengths were. And then obviously, I think to, uh, to this day, I think it was my yeah, it was my best season as far as goals last year playing for him. Um, yeah, some of that other stuff, I think, I don't know. I think you'd have to think that he probably wants some of that back. Um, just maybe not the, not exactly the, the right thing to do in some of those situations. But, I, again, speaking of the Mitch the Mitch thing, I think uh, just how the guys in the room, like how we handled it, I think we had a good laugh about it. And it was one of those things where it was a good way that they brought the guys together with that it didn't turn into anything toxic or anything like that anyone who knows mitch knows how great of a great of a guy he is and uh heart of gold so um stuff like that never got uh got in the way of, of that so yeah i think that stuff like that i think if you have a good group like good good a group in the locker room like you're able to to handle that stuff uh in the right way and um 
yeah, I think uh, ultimately we did that as a as a team and moved on from the pretty player. Yeah, because he's like a 19 year old kid. Like, how do, yeah. how do you find out about it? Like, does he come back in the room and be like, guys, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Babs just had me rank the whole yeah. players and like, who's yeah. got the worst? Like, is that how is that and how I, it goes down? And you're dead last, Jimmy. <laughs> well, well, no. Like, ultimately, I think too. Like, again, like I think, um, I, like Bozy, I remember coming out of like like some of that like almost like. Laugh, laughing about it like he couldn't believe what had just happened but also again like we kind of when, when you play play for Babs like like yeah like there's gonna be some stuff you might have to to address and deal with or whatever so I think Bozy handled it great like we kind of kind of had a, had a laugh with uh with Mitch about some of it and whatever so it was all it was all good like I said anyone who knows Mitch knows how great of a, a guy he is and teammate he is so we uh we had a good laugh about that uh, with the with the uh, with the team, and then uh, kind of moved on, and we were working a lot of distract made distraction. All right. So, what about Philly? You go back to Philly. How'd that How'd that go down in free agency? Where I uh, got Holmgren calls you back, or was it Hextall? Whoever it was, man, we had Hextall on with us. Yeah. Like, and was it a no brainer to go back? Did you have any reservations to go back to the same team that drafted you? Like, were you looking for something different, or was it like, hey, man, they put thirty five million dollars on the table, oh, and you just had baby. to take it? Yeah, you know, like looking back going into free agency, like especially with how my previous kind of tenure ended, like I wouldn't have necessarily expected them to be an option or to be uh, to be interested or whatever. But uh, it became clear pretty clear early on in that, like that they were very interested. They seemed to really want me. And um, um, I thought the fit on the ice was going to be was going to be a good thing uh, with some of the again, especially some of the right shot players they had, I think, with some of the. So, so kind of uh, my style fitting in with uh, with some of the guys that they had, I thought was going to be uh, really good. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what went into it. Obviously, uh, again, the familiarity there was still um, a lot of the same uh, trainers and things like that. Obviously, a different uh, coaching staff and management and things like that. But there was definitely that familiarity there. And yeah, I definitely I didn't necessarily. If I would have, if you would have told me like predicting into it that that would have ended up, I would have been a little. Surprised, just like I mentioned, based on some of the things with how my tenure ended the time before and um, and stuff like that. But uh, but no, just again going through the the process and things like that, it just seemed like it was going to be uh, the best fit and the best choice. What happened at the trade deadline, Jim? Like what 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 was it? Like they had a deal, and Detroit had to move a player. They couldn't move the player, so then they couldn't trade for you. But it, I, I felt like maybe there was something more to it because you seem so disappointed that they couldn't move you and, you know, give you a chance to go play in the playoffs, man. That had to, that had to be a little bit deflating, right? Yeah. I think you said it, it was a little deflating. I think, uh, based on some of the things that I was hearing, uh, going into that beforehand and obviously what ended up, uh, sort of shaking out, obviously I'm not, uh, not in the know as far as a lot of those conversations and things like that and how they're going on the other side of it. So, it's hard to have a full uh, um, perspective, I guess, on it. But ultimately, again, I was definitely a little disappointed as far as hoping to get a chance to play in the playoffs, maybe get a chance to to try to go win somewhere. But uh, again, it's just uh, over the years, you just you tend to you tend to see a lot of different things, so you try not to let it uh, affect you too much. And it's just always about getting yourself ready for the next day and things like that. So ultimately, it was definitely a disappointing. Uh, with certain things with how it was handled, I think ultimately. Um, but again, there's always um, another day and uh, another uh, to get yourself ready for. So I try to just approach it that way at the end of it. But um, yeah. All right. You'd be a good person to answer the question about Tortorella versus Babcock. I feel like the way people describe and break them down, it's almost like the same because they're such hard ass coaches but everyone who knows them, like, oh, they're, but they're great yeah, they're people great. behind the scenes yeah. and they treat everybody. And so it's like, all right, you know, but they've had kind of similar run-ins with their players and whatever. You know, he's coming out and saying, you know, I, listen, he's uh, what he scratched Kevin Hayes, you know, uh -huh. saying you guys are at the end of the rope with your con with scratch your himself. careers and stuff. I mean, yeah, he's, he, he was a healthy scratch. I think in St. <laughs> Louis, Torch sat upstairs. He yeah. wasn't even on the bench, you know. <laughs> that had to be so weird for the players. But did do you did you like playing for Torts, man? Are you are you happy for a fresh start? How do you look at that? Yeah, you know, with Torts, I, I had the experience of playing for him at the World Cup, so I had a little bit of experience playing for him. Obviously, again, playing at a tournament like that versus a full season, it's always going to be different going into it. But at least I again, you have a little bit of uh, the experience that way. But um, 
yeah, overall, like I had a, I had a great experience playing for him. I had a good relationship with him. Um, I think ultimately, like for again, as I've found over the years, just the more like communication, and sometimes it's going a bit out of uh, your comfort zone, but just being comfortable with uncomfortable conversations that may need to be had on on either side, I think is is always a healthy thing. So. Um, Ultimately, yeah, I, I look back on like my relationship and with Morris and stuff like that um, as, as good. And um, I obviously I wish we could have won more games. And I think when you win more games, a lot of the other stuff kind of like tends to clean itself up in a way. Um, but yeah, like ultimately, my I can't, for my own personal relationship with him, like it, it was great. And uh, he was uh, pretty direct and uh, straightforward with me. And I think ultimately, as a player, that's all you can really ask for as far as uh, knowing where you stand and knowing what's expected and stuff like that. So I think that uh, over the years, I feel like um, I've uh, you learn how to uh, um, you learn how to thrive under those sorts of uh, instances. And you almost you almost want that just again. So there's no gray as far as uh, what when you're walking in or out of the rink and then you kind of can be a little bit mentally freer that way i find why wasn't he on the bench though like are you, are you guys like wait wait you're not coming on the yeah, bench what are you like doing, rocky man? rocky thompson's the do head coach you, today like it's just yeah, so um, weird you know that i we never I, I never really asked him that that would have been probably a good question to ask though uh, i think i don't know it's i think from uh from what i'd heard from uh from some of the other guys for that is just i think just getting a different perspective and trying to evaluate different things and different people and different roles or something so yeah I, 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 I don't really. It was know. odd. Yeah, I, it was uh, get, Jimmy. It's odd. Get him, uh, if you guys get him on, you'll have to ask. Dude, we're trying to, man. He's being kind yeah. of a pussy. He's like, about uh, it. JVR, you're coaching tonight. Yeah, JV, you, yeah. you do everything. <laughs> hey, let, let me ask oh. you something, dude. And, 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 like, I know you're a high pick and you knew money was coming. But, like, you signed the, your first big contract and money isn't everything unless you don't have it. And then it is. <laughs> but when you signed that first big ticket, did, were you like, God damn fucking right. Like, no matter what happens, I got coin. I could fucking break my fucking I can go to up. Lake Manitoba. I don't give a fuck. Like, explain that feeling to the fans that, you know, will never sign a contract like that. Like, what'd you do with it? Were you just staring at yourself in the mirror yeah. saying, I love you, Jimmy? I love you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's good. I, I wish I was doing that, actually. But, uh, no, um, yeah, just, like, looking back on some of that, like, Obviously, for me, I'm someone who loves loves the game, loves everything about the game, loves everything that goes into it. So, like, to see some of that get rewarded was kind of uh, cool. All the work that you put in over the years, all the work that you know you were continuing, going to continue to put in um, and things like that. But I think it's funny how, like, again, you know, there's always uh, – uh, that shift in perspective because it's like when you sign a deal like that, it's like, okay, like now I want to make sure I not only live up to this deal, I want to outplay this deal and um, – and be, be just keep kind of taking it to another level. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of my always my my mindset. It's just the next day and things like that. Again, obviously, again, we're lucky to to do what we do and get a chance to get kind of compensated and rewarded like that is uh, is a great thing. And obviously, it allows you to do a lot of uh, all, a lot of the things I'm able to do in my life to to hockey and um, because of all that. But but no, ultimately, I think as nice as that stuff is, I still just love the the kind of day to day of uh, everything that goes into it, uh, trying to always work on different things to, to improve that or um, that, that process of figuring different things out and getting some of those kind of light bulb moments of, uh, of when you're, when you're working on something and it all comes together. Um, that's still, I think uh, stuff that, uh, that, that is really rewarding and just kind of seeing that growth that you're able to have as like a person and a player. Um, over the years was again you, you try to again that was something I remember Prongs told me really early on it's just when you stop learning you should stop playing so so uh, just always trying to again incorporate the different things into my game to kind of expand my range and stuff as a player and uh, um, again because that's that's what you got to do if you want so you're telling me so you're telling me you didn't uh, look at your paycheck stub and take a picture of it and then send it to your <laughs> and then send it to your buddies and tell them to go fuck themselves <laughs> you didn't do that <laughs> I mean, like I did. More we got a couple. We got a couple nice, uh, yeah. nice, nice trips with my buddies out of that for sure. I mean, yeah. Like you said, like you got to enjoy your life and uh, yeah, man. The people that have been like I've been lucky too. Like speaking of stuff like that, support from not only family but my friends. Like I had a group of like twenty friends that came came to the draft, came to my first uh, career NHL game, came to the World Juniors. 
been at all these different outdoor games over the years. So I've got a I've got a great crew of uh, support with friends like that that have been there every step of the way. So it's yeah, fun to again when uh, over the years, like when you get a chance to, especially in the summers, uh, do stuff like that and have a good time with your buddies like that. And uh, that's, uh, that's it's always, a good feeling, uh, isn't it, Jimmy? Great. Prongs it's, it's is like great feeling. Prongs is like great save Prongs every like penny. save your money when you go to lunch with somebody. Make them pay. Make them pay. <laughs> Although you make a lot more money than them. <laughs> <laughs> Just make them pay. Make them hey, pay. listen, I, on a, I know you've done a lot of stuff in the community, man. You've been involved in, and with a lot of different things, different groups. The Provorov situation, how did that go over in the dressing room? Like, is it made out to be too big of a deal in the media? Like, how do you guys handle it as players? Do you just move on? Like, tell us. Yeah, I think ultimately for that, like, again, like, there was so much behind the scenes as far as, uh, like, what different members of the organization did to try to make it a great night. And there was different stuff that Scott Lawton and I um, leading into that we're doing for a lot of different home games, hosting different groups. So again, we're playing, playing a sport and playing a game where we have different people from all different walks of life, different countries, things like that. Um, So obviously there's always, you're never going to fully agree a hundred percent with maybe different things that different decisions that someone else make. Um, but ultimately, again, I think in that situation, like we were, again, just trying to focus on the positives of that, of that night and, um, the different, uh, impact we're, you're able to make with the different things that we're doing. Like I mentioned, particularly the stuff that lots and I were, were doing uh, over the course of the season, hosting different groups and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I think that, so was, he's not Satan. Was... <laughs> he's not Satan. Like everybody thinks he is. Yeah, I got you, man. Uh, Jimmy, I, you're a good dude. I dude. know. I always wonder oh, like if the team should even like, they should just say he's got a groin injury or yeah, something, or lie. he's got some like maintenance Just lie and don't make such a big deal out of it and, and maybe lie. save some of the headache. Hey, listen, I got to ask you this a little bit off the wall, but you know, since you're a current player, I'm going to ask you, um, Dana White from the UFC, oh. he comes out the other day and it's like taking shots at, the marketing efforts of the yep. NHL, like what's your take of the way NHL players are marketed, man? You're, you're an American, like you're, you're familiar with athletes in other sports, how big they are, how, how iconic they are from, from, you know, baseball to, to football, to basketball. Why, why do you think the NHL is lacking in that, in that area? And NHL players aren't as marketable maybe as some of the stars in other sports. Yeah. You know what? That's, that's definitely a, a, a hot topic and stuff that certainly, um, again, you look over the years, I think there was a time I want to say maybe in the nineties where things were a lot more similar as far as their revenues and, and then the growth just took off in a lot of these other sports. So you could look at all these different, uh, strategies about how to do that. But yeah, like you said, like there was some star power, um, in some of these other sports and how do we try to, maybe create some of that or how do you try to capitalize on some of that? Because again, like we've got some great characters within the game and some, uh, some like you, you see every time there's a chance for whether it's like they used to be on like those 24 seven shows or behind the scenes stuff or now with all the content that's out there, like people are starving for, for stuff. Uh, I'm uh, always such great feedback on their stuff about hockey players. So I don't know if it's a combination of maybe, um sometimes as hockey players i think we can we we don't like to get out of our comfort zone as much and uh and maybe there's a combination of something like that or maybe there needs to be maybe there can be a strategy that's a little bit different as far as how we market the game and things like that so i think these are all good things to talk about and i don't know i don't pretend to know what the solution is for it but certainly like you said like some of these other sports have kind of outgrown um outgrown um uh, NH, uh, the NHL and hockey wise over the last whatever it's been 20 ish years or so. But uh, yeah, those are all all stuff that I think it'd be interesting to see if you get a lot of smart people together, how they could figure out and what the if that what the real ceiling is for for where we're at as a league and a sport. And if we can continue to kind of grow things, obviously things have grown a long way, but let's see if we can take it to that next level. Hey, listen, you Jim, Jim you. you're a movie star. <laughs> You've been in forty. What, what is he in? Forty year old virgin or whatever. What, really? What, what were you in? What movie? This, this is forty. This is forty. What? Yeah. what how'd you? How'd that come about? <laughs> so I, we, I kind of like that. Kind of fell into our laps a little bit. Like it was. I think it was supposed to be originally uh, Dan Carcillo because uh, they wanted someone with like, <laughs> like obviously he's a character, right? So and they wanted someone uh, with no teeth for the role, and there were some issues with him. I think. Uh, with like him being Canadian or something with him being able to, 
to do the do the um the role. So they ended up getting Lappy, and then Lappy invited me, Scotty Hartnell, and uh, Matt Carl out to come with them to tag along. And again, that's another one where it's like, who <laughs> never w- growing up playing hockey and like be, like never really being uh exposed to that world of uh of stuff like that like i'm like i never would have guessed i would have had a chance to do something like that so i was like you know what this is going to be a bucket list thing i'm gonna go go for it It was a lot it was one long day so i think it's like 90 seconds worth of uh screen time in the movie we were there for like almost like 20 hours i want to say on the set just like going through the different things and you get you definitely get a newfound uh respect for what they go through to how much work goes into making those movies but it was uh definitely pretty cool they pay you. Uh, they, 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 they pay you for that. They, they pay you. They pay we you. Still, we still get some of those residual. Uh, oh boy. Uh, checks every every so often. It's usually like maybe a couple hundred bucks a year or something like that. So uh, oh, it's, it's a good catch. feeling. It's, uh, it always it's always every so often. Again, it's funny where that movie's been on, uh, like whether it's like pay per view or HBO or whatever for for the last like ten years. So like I feel like I get a text like usually once a year about that now. Like where it's like oh like were you in that. Is that actually you in that movie? And I'm like, so yeah, that, that was uh, that was pretty cool. Well, Jimmy, you keep saving that hundred hours every couple, every six months. <laughs> you get a new pontoon. You're gonna, you're gonna get, you put a new motor on that fucking pontoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, let me ask you something, dude. You're a smart guy. You played a long time, and I know your career is not over. And I get that. You're gonna play a lot longer. But what do you want to do after hockey? You, you 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 probably have all kinds of different options. But what would you want to do? You're a good soul. And people are going to want to yep. hire you for a lot of different things. What are you looking at, man? What are you thinking? Yeah, so I'm, I've there's actually been some uh, over the last couple of years anyway. Like there's been some different programs uh, through the PA that I've been able to to go through. Whether there's different, um, it's almost uh, like they have these different opportunities where I did something with uh, like there's a program through the Harvard Business School mm-hmm. that I went through um, with some other some of the other guys, and then. Um, uh, stuff like that to try to again figure out what uh, how, what what your skills kind of translate to. So, so there's like stuff like that. We go through courses. I've done these different other things with uh, different uh, I guess psychologists that through set up through the PA where you kind of find out a little bit more about like personality wise or skill set wise that way. Like what what uh, might be a good good fit for you. And yeah, at, at this point, I think I'm so passionate about the game and love it. Love. Uh, what I've learned about the game and learned about trying to develop myself as a player in person. It's like that seems to be something I, I could be interested in um, uh, when I'm done playing is trying to maybe pass some of that on to the next generation. And again, with what, like I mentioned with my youngest brother, um, he's starting to do that with coaching a couple of teams and we're doing actually uh, Van Reenstijk brothers uh, hockey camp uh, this summer and he's doing some clinics. So I don't know what that might look like long term for me, but at least kind of dabbling in the in that as far as uh, helping um, helping different players and stuff of, of all different ages, I guess. Just work what they, what it, what they can do to kind of work at their game and um, find ways to get better and how think, different things can translate to that. So I think for me, I've always been kind of curious over the years as far as different whether it's training methods or. Um, um, body work stuff, whatever it may be, like to try to like just basically squeeze everything out of myself that I can as far as just developing myself as a player and and uh, in person. So I think I've learned a lot of pretty cool things from a lot of people way smarter than me uh, with, with these things. So uh, so I think just being able to to know all, certain things like that and, and um, maybe be a good resource to, to help help players with, with stuff like that would be something I could be interested in when I'm done, but or, we'll see what happens. Or Jimmy. Or. Or you could just kick, kick your those goddamn feet up. feet up, boy, <laughs> and check out that fucking lake and jam out the fucking music and watch your kids grow up and do whatever the yeah. fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right, dude. And, you yeah, deserve no, it. And if they think they're smarter than you, tell them you went to the Harvard exactly. Business School. And you, went to, and you went to New Hampshire. Yeah. No shit. Uh, I won't have to tell anyone that that was just like a six week thing. Like, hopefully, they don't read the fine print enough to know that. Yeah, they don't know. No. Actually, yeah. like Harvard semester, or whatever you want from it. So, yeah, I'll have to make sure I get the right font size for, uh, for that <laughs> little uh, plaque that I get. Hey, last thing. Listen, you've been great, man. We appreciate it. Uh, you, you get along with Chief? I mean, maybe you sign here in St. Louis this summer. You know, we'll get you a contract with Chief. Did you, did you get along yeah. with Chief when he was there yeah. in Philly? 
Yeah, I got along with Chief great. Uh, and Philly, like, he was another guy my first couple of years. Like, just he would just pull me in. We'd always go over video and watch different things. And I'd, he was a good resource. We'd I'd pick his brain about certain things. He'd tell me uh, certain things that they were kind of looking for for me. And I'm more like, again, getting that kind of one on one feedback is always really good just because, again, when you're a lot of times you're doing video in front of the whole team, you're not sure how it might apply to a different sort of situation, but he was great with that. And again, obviously seeing him get a chance to, to win and stuff like that was really cool. So I always have had a lot of uh, respect uh, for him and a good relationship with him. So um, we love him, man. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. like, Oh, he can walk on water. Lucky to have him there. We yeah. go, he can walk on water in St. Louis. I'll tell you that right. <laughs> fucking uh-huh. now, homie. Yeah. Or you could come hang out with us on the podcast. We have a pretty easy yeah, gig, we man. Go. K- Cam Strick and JVR. Let's go. Oh my guys, a ring to it. Oh, I like that it. Has a ring I like to it. it. I like it. Dude, you're the man. Yeah, we're, we're rooting for you, man. We're rooting for you. When Andy said he got you on, I'm like, hell yeah! I, I remember playing against you and all that stuff, dude. I respect yeah. the shit out of you. Yeah. So yeah. Well, by the way, I'll I'll still never forget. Like I think it was my maybe my first game in St. Louis. And I, I couldn't, like, I think it was you and maybe DJ King. Oh, and you guys hit Oscars Bartulis harder than anyone I think I've, I've ever seen get hit. <laughs> so I was like, like, where am I? What is You're in hell. <laughs> You're not in Jersey oh, anymore. You're in hell. St. Louis <laughs> hell. That was, I remember that vividly. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, that was, uh, that was insane. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably clean, Andy. It DJ. was probably <laughs> clean. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Hey, you're the best, dude. Hey, we'll we'll stay in touch and uh, good yeah. luck to you. Man. Yeah. Best of luck in free agency yeah, too, dude. man. I'll text. Right, I'll text you, you on July first. We'll text you July first. <laughs> yeah, sure. yes, yes, All, All right, right Jimmy. Be cool, man. Yep. All right. Take See you, man. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B e h l m a n n dot com. Get out there, Detroit, Missouri. Check it out. On one side, you got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. All right, that was Jim Van Riemsdyk, Cam. What a good dude. He's got a brother who plays, too. Yeah, Tre- no. Trevor. Trevor Van Riemsdyk. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, li- I like both of them, actually. He's a nice kid, man. He's a damn good hockey player. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that they came on. I think his uh, family owns like a significant like shipping port, like a port. Like on a like a port shipping business. Like a, they own that like the, like the port. Fuck. You know what a port is like a where they ship to and f- and from. Cool. That's, that's a good business, dude. Oh well, yeah, if you own a port, you're damn right. If you own a shipping a, company, you're a, damn right. It's a hell of a business. Yeah, you'll make a ton of money. But to get to that point, it's probably pretty difficult. There's a lot of great business out there. I'm still looking into my real estate business. You know, I had real estate agents honestly from who listen to the show. Oh, yeah. Reach out and want to team up with me. Good for you, man. Do it then. <clears throat> Get my wife involved. I saw this um, lady on uh, Instagram who sells uh, Miami, like super expensive, like high end real estate in Miami, mm-hmm. like fourteen million dollar homes, twenty two million. She really homes. hot. Very hot. Funny how that works. Think about that. They have all these hot women down there. Yes. Selling all these places. They don't even probably know what they're doing, and they're selling them because they're beautiful, and people are just like, yeah, okay. There's a lot of weird things out in Florida that happen. But I feel like real estate is just the way to go. I think my advice to any young kid listening right now, get into real estate. Yeah. Buy real estate. Get a house on nice real estate. You know, that value will hold. What's your advice to young people? Um, as a whole, find a vision on what you want. Like, what do you like? What are you good at? You know, what, what do you enjoy? Are you good? Are you good at something you enjoy? Well, pursue that. Whatever that is, it could be music, it could be real estate, it could be numbers. It could what be if radio. you're really good at something that you don't like? Well, I'd still pursue that too. <laughs> like I would. Depends on what it is. If it's if it's something you're really good at that you could monetize and make money off of, then find a way to enjoy it. But or if you're not happy, then you have to move on and find something else. Don't do something you don't want to do. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many options out there to be creative. You know, you have to have a vision, though. Like, you got to want something. You got to be competitive. Like, even my competitive spirit when I was young, I wanted to wheel hot girls. Like, I know it sounds corny, but fuck, that motivated me to go to the gym every day, to do all this shit, to get psycho about hockey. And, you know, I didn't, I wanted to be something different. 
I always had that that fire in me to do that. And so it's hard to force fire on kids, but you can say, "You, what do you, what do you like? What do you want? What do you, you know, what's your vision?" Even at a young age, like I, I had a vision. I knew I wanted to be something. Whatever that was, I just wanted to be competitive, and it all worked out. Don't not want to do anything, and sit there like, I don't know. What, 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 "What do I do?" Like, you got to have something. Cause it's going to come by quick. And yeah, you're get some older. people just don't have that vision. They feel like they don't have the means to do what they want to do. Know, it's tougher for some people it's than tough, others. Man. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, but I will say this. There's plenty of like professional athletes who, who just play because they're good at it, but they don't necessarily love it. Yeah. And there's guys that just love it so damn much. And there's the reason why those, they love it. There's some of those, and yeah. that's why they made it, because of their passion. They just love it every second of the day. Like Sam Gagne. He, he's gonna, he admitted on the show Bedard. that he's going to be a hockey lifer. He's like... Yeah, I play. He's still playing, and the guy do, is doing hockey schools. So. Yeah, but the thing is, though, it's hard to make the NHL, even if you're good, and not like it. Like you gotta love this. You gotta love playing. You gotta mm-hmm. love something about it, mm-hmm. or else your passion. You better be really, 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 really skilled. And even then, everybody's skilled now. Well, so you, I, I don't think there's too many guys in the NHL that don't love the sport. I, listen, maybe like. When you play football and baseball, maybe you like football better, but you play baseball because the money's there. Right. But you're a hockey guy, man. You're lo- you're obsessed I'm with it. I'm just saying, there's some. I, I, I've talked to some in the past. Like, they don't watch any hockey. They're always like, I, I, I you know. But you know what's funny to me is the guy who tries to be cool by saying, I don't watch hockey. I don't even watch hockey. But then, like, the, they retire from hockey, and they just, like, they want to get back into hockey. And all of a sudden, like, they're, like, managing teams. Yeah. They're, like, running teams. They're working for teams. Like, oh, I thought you didn't like hockey. So, so now you're going to, like, be in charge of, like, a team or you're going to be involved in, like, scouting and have a, a, a major say in the direction of a team. But you're the guy who told me your entire career that you don't watch hockey on off days because you, you don't even like watching hockey. Well, when you're playing all the time, a lot of people don't watch hockey. Like, you're sick of it. But once you don't stop playing every fucking day, you get back into it because you miss the sport. Okay? Not everybody just watches hockey all the time even when they're playing. They're sick of it. Some do. Not a lot. I mean, a lot of guys watch soccer instead. They yeah, got to get away from it. That I just doesn't don't, mean they don't, I don't they're not going to be smart about any it. Any players that say like they never watch hockey, I just yeah, don't they do. I, I don't believe they it. do. But but sometimes you're like, I'm sick of it. Mm-hmm. I want to watch something else. You yeah. know. Well, even I get like that. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that. It's all good, man. You need to be like that, dude. I want you to be like that. You're going to be down to the draft. You're going to be talking to Doug Armstrong the whole time. Like that's good. That's good for business. I want you to be down there, dude. I wish I can go with you. <clears throat> Actually, I'd do it. Well, why don't you go down there? Oh, I, don't, I don't want to do that much. Yeah, anybody, <laughs> well, I mean, if you, want, if you wish you could go, any, anybody can go. Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't wish that much. Maybe I, I, I missed Well, you said that. I, I did, but uh, I'll take that. I, mean, Cam's I don't like, want to go that Cam's much. like, I wish I could go. Last time I was in fucking Nashville. I wish I, I was going. I had a panic attack because there's so many people. Oh, did around. you have a panic attack? No, I was just trying to find Kate. No, driving the other day? Oh, yeah, I did. So I, uh, so I, I got, you know, I get a, I get a Jeep to drive, you know, in the summer and I took the doors off and there's no mirrors. And I, I know you can put mirrors on. I just haven't done it yet. And I'm like, you know what? Finally, I'm going to drive into work. Mm-hmm. I'm up early and it's, it's about 38 minutes. It's a long stretch of, of stop and go Manchester road. It's just lights everywhere. People passing you, all kinds of stuff. And after my radio show, I drove there and I was okay. But on the way home, man. You know, it was so busy. I couldn't see. I had to totally turn around to see if I could even change lanes. There's fucking things going on. And I just kind of had a panic attack. What are you thinking about? Oh, my God. I feel like I'm falling out of the thing. People are flying by me. The doors were off? The doors. Everything's off. So I'm like, like you're just like naked. And I got pee. And it's a long drive. And I can't see because I have no mirrors. And I just kind of freaked out. I was sweating the whole time. And I remember going. And it turns into a little bit of a highway when I get way out by me. And I got these trucks past me, like, wham, and it shakes my car. Like, God damn. I just kind of freaked myself out a little bit, man. I'm drinking coffee all fucking morning, doing my radio show, and I just drove that thing home, and I just had a panic attack. So where did the panic attack happen? On, on the whole the whole ride. Did you pull over? Did you kept yes. driving? Yes, Tr- two or three times. Did I pulled Kate, over. Kate, come get you? Re- no, she wanted, to, she's like, you got to let me come get you next time. Like, Oh, you didn't call her? No, I, I, my, my phone's in, it's locked away. Everything blows out. Like, everything's locked away. I came in, like, it's hard to, like, it's do It's got the that. smallest little mirror. Or not mirror, the uh, windshield. It's I feel Jeep, like I'm it's driving it's in, like, a... Andy, it's a, it's a Jeep. They're like... It's like a toy it's a, car. It's a toy. It's a toy. 
Yeah, it's a toy. And people drive them every day, though, and they're I know, beautiful. I, I know, they and do. you can get one from Bellman too. Damn right. So, I think it'd be a great car to have, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a bit. It's, just, it's fun. It's Tim, fun like driving off road just, and stuff. Just you know what? Listen, just next you time can't the, do it. Next time, can't no, do highway. You just gotta breathe it. it. Oh, I was. Yeah, I was no, breathing. no. Take a deep breath. No, there you go. Just relax. Exactly. Calm down. Take a deep breath. And just focus, I, man. I, I did. And I'm I got, just I telling got you how to get through it. Thank you. You know, you have no idea what it's like. It's like somebody. It's like Andy telling me how to get off of fucking painkiller abuse. Like you, you have no, no idea, no idea. Just quit taking them, dude. Taking what? Painkiller. Yeah. Why don't you just yeah, there you, exactly? You're exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly right, Andy. Dude, I remember. Buddy, 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 you're okay. Quit, just quit taking them. D- doesn't work that way, homie. Mm-hmm. Just doesn't work that way. So you know what I'm talking about with that. Like nothing worse than a guy not understanding you. Like I tell you what, my friends were not even fucking good, with, good to talk to because they didn't understand. I had to talk to like my mom and somebody who was really into it mm-hmm. that understood me. Like everybody's like, ah, oh, you're okay. You'll be. You're tough. You're fucking crushing guys. Like you're t- no. Do you this, have an this. addictive personality? God, yes. Are you crazy? <laughs> you don't kidding. know that by now. Kidding. It's not. I mean. It's good and bad. No, I'm not laughing know. at it, but it was It's good and bad because I a trick question. Makes you popular around town. People like remember you when you meet them, you know, stuff like that. I'm nice to everybody. I make them laugh and stuff. Um, but no, like fuck, man. I could walk into a room at a bar and just look and I'll know who's holding holding, holding what? Whatever. I'll know. You know what I mean? Like I could walk into a bar and look at a guy and be like, oh, "I know. You got always it's just, I you know, it's and, and I then think, I could talk to him and I he'll think, hook it up. I think you're probably wrong on a lot of different things. Like, you probably think you know, you're judging everybody, but like, sometimes you're not right. Andy, sometimes I, you're mischaracterizing Andy, somebody. I did it my whole life. Yeah, but sometimes you're mischaracterizing <laughs> somebody. You just never know. What are you talking about? You may say, well, this guy has a, you, you, may, no. you may be wrong. Not, not really. No? <laughs> not, not really. When you know, you know, you mm. know. Maybe you're wrong on things. Never know. Well, you, Andy's not wrong on things because the only things he knows is hockey, and he doesn't talk about anything else. He just asks stupid questions. <clears throat> there's no such. thing It is as, hard to tell a story. There's around no you such thing like, as a stupid question. Remember that? No, I, I get, I get, I no, get that. No, so people say well, that. It, but when you're doing a podcast and you stop me asking a dumb question when I'm trying to tell a story, like it ruins the mojo. That's all. It's for the people. We're 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 taking care of the people out there. Like we have to work for them. Cam's like a yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cam, Cam's Cam's a submarine expert now. I, well, I'm not he's, an expert he's on it. watched the coverage the last couple of days. Well, yeah, I read about it, too. Yeah, so There's a I. lot. So There's a lot of stuff going on. I wa- mm-hmm. we watched it. Listen to James Cameron. Just He's just so fucking smart. You know their so bodies turned into water? Yeah, they, they turned into... They just got crushed, Danny. It's like a... It's just like they turned to liquid. You know? They turned to liquid. Yeah. Turned to like water. The, like, like, they're not... Rec- well, the, well, liquid. They're not... Re- they're not. Rec- <laughs> Andy calls me the other day. He's like... Do you really think there's not they're they're dead? Or you don't think they're still in? I go no, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Do you think you know you could, can you get their bodies? Like no, 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 you can't do that. They they will not recover the bodies. Will, no, there's no bodies What's inside recover. that ship. You think what ship? The Titanic. Titanic yeah, a lot of a lot the of back to, uh, barnacles. And have they like kept like restored weird. it to make sure it's well, like. See, it's this like, is what no. you're dragging on, and I'm not gonna. No. I'm not gonna. It's fall, like, I'm not gonna fall. It's like this. when I go to the. Uh, so you see, the Vanderbilt, so whoever the gave Van, that the Vanderbilt place. So whoever gave that 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 review of me being a dick to Andy, like that's like he drags it on, and he sets me up to be an. A- I'm not gonna fall for it. <laughs> I'm not gonna fall for it now. So the Vanderbilt Mansion, the in, Biltmore, the Biltmore, yeah, in North Carolina. So remember, t- like security called on on Ty because he walked into the display yeah. of that room underneath the rope that nobody has ever t- touched since like the 1800s yeah and he had chocolate all over his hands and his i mean it was a, such a it was an absolute that's a disaster. fucking ledoux he was Hoosier he move. was he was like two years old dude and yeah, he ran like, in there don't give him chocolate before and, you go into a prestigious well, building it wasn't whatever and so i had to like hold like a popsicle or not a popsicle a lollipop for him to come like run to me and security came in there like why would you even take them to the biltmore when they can't appreciate it at a young so age? it's all roped off and my you kid know? runs in there and like everyone's like oh, like, oh my like yeah. and I, I couldn't go in there security wouldn't let me go in there to get him He's sitting on this like chair and at this desk that hasn't been sat on in like oh, hundreds no. of hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. You it's know? like they'll be fine. I just don't think. Oh, that. they like flipped out, dude. They were not fine. It's, oh they, yeah, no. Okay. And then people were very out. rude about it. Well, then get control of your kids, you freaking Hoosier. <laughs> like seriously, Ledoux Hoosier. He's eating chocolate, rubbing chocolate on paintings and stuff. Good God, probably <laughs> punching people in their wieners. 
Uh, he did that. he do he, that? He used to do that. He doesn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. When I gave him the look, mm-hmm. put me down. He put me down. <laughs> Downtown China. Chinatown. Yeah, <laughs> I never got hit. I haven't got hit like that in a while. Like I don't <laughs> really go down when I get punched. He put me down. <laughs> a little time. If he wasn't so damn cute, I would have been pissed. Jesus. Cute kid. I don't think he'll do that again. He ain't gonna do that again. I'll hit him back. Well, listen. Have a wonderful. Uh, <laughs> enjoy the. Uh, Draft and everything. I will, I will we'll have it. lots of coverage for yeah. you. Um, Again, this is a Saturday. Sh- yeah, recording, we're doing this guys. on Saturday. We're sorry, we just so got we got back. Any up. trades that take place Saturday, yeah. Sunday, or Monday? I know. Apologize. We tried to entertain you, man. JVR was great. You know, we're just trying to entertain you guys. We just we 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 truly do. Oh yeah. Baby. So keep us giving us reviews and stuff like that. Yes. And um. You and know, go we'll, to uh, go to all our to, platforms. Yeah, all our platforms and, like, and and support our sponsors. You got you got to help us with that, guys. Got to guys and girls. It really is keeping this thing going. We'll entertain you every damn week mm. with new guests, new hot takes. Like the backup goalie is going to get some good games in stuff like that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that backup goalie is going to play some games. He goes, Cam. I'm going to predict. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Joel Holfer <laughs> will get some games this year. Oh, the backup goalie for the Blues that nobody cares about. Oh, cool. I didn't say that. I said he'll, I said he'll be a storyline. It's year. all good. It's all good, man. So when it happens, you're gonna be like, Andy, That's fine. I, I chirped you. At That's the time. fine, and I'll always, you're like, I'll you, always you, you, apologize. You bullied me. No, I didn't. You bullied me. No, don't you play that bully game? Well, you with bullied. Me. You you could be a bully too. Have you hey, ever... just because you're not a big guy and you don't eat food doesn't mean you can't be a bully. Who are you can. You could be a bully too. You don't have to be a big tough guy were to be ever, a bully. Were you ever bullied? Oh, you were actually. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Raven, um, by, Raven, Raven Whitlock. But I was bullied in a way that I, I did stick up for myself, mm-hmm. and then, uh, but I was starting to get look more cocky when yeah. I was getting older and, yeah. and tougher. And so a couple older guys in high school kind of beat me up a little bit. But then I got tougher, and then nobody looked at me. Then mm-hmm. it was just like, nope, nobody even looked at me afterwards. But I had to build that reputation up, Andy. I had to fight a couple guys. I started fighting on the ice. And uh, and then uh, yeah, I was friends with people, so I, I never got bullied yeah, again. But yeah. it did. But I had to stick up for yeah, myself. I God never, damn right. And if anybody yeah. messes with Ty, and he's getting bullied around, he's got to stick up for himself. And I know it's different now in school, but don't you, uh, Chloe to Little Ivy to Ty, you got to know if they're getting bullied in school because I could fuck them up, Andy. You got to be aware of that. You talk to them and just make sure that you know. That's all. Because yeah. the girls could be the worst. Oh my God. They could be the worst. And you make sure that they're I, not bullying yeah, other people either. Right. I do like Because it. I know how I, you I, are. I li- Your attitude a little mm-hmm. bit sometimes that you could be a little. Hopefully they, you know, like they can be bullies too. And you got to put your foot down on that. I do like it when you give parenting advice. Cam Cam has a cat. I was a kid. I was a kid. I saw that cat. Look, Listen, little baby. That, 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 thing, that thing hasn't eaten in weeks. It looks, it looks sick. like you. It looks sick. It's sixteen. Don't say that, dude. It's gonna pat, do more. Well, okay. I, well, I hey, if listen. we have a podcast that day, I ain't gonna be here. You, you, ha- you're gonna uh-uh. have to. We, you know, and you we'll, go on vacation every week. My little kitty cat dies. I ain't coming in. Yeah, you're gonna have. So to. you know, I'll get you a new cat, dude. You know, okay. <laughs> quit saying that, man. That's my baby, dude. No. That's my baby. Now boo. we're dragging on. Boo boo. Oh, baby, boo boo. Hair Club and HairClub.com, 800-279-7878. HairClub.com slash Cam and Strick. That is what? The landing page. Damn right. Check it out. Ask about the pill. Set Get up that consultation. I'll, I'll do it. Set, Set up, up that, that consultation I'll, from Andy, the landing it. page. From the landing page. Set up a consultation. I'm telling you, you walk in there, you'll be ease. It's an easy, easy thing to do. It's walking through the damn door. Easy, they easy. are the sweetest people, and they'll tell you exactly what's going on. Everyone that works in there probably has something going on with their hair, or they mm-hmm. probably wouldn't get into that business. Right. So. You're all in it together. I've been through the procedures. I'm telling you, get in there and get it going. Will you watch Belay when I'm out of town? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be over your house. Leave me the keys. Why are your dogs in the crate while you're home? Well, because they're going to jump on you and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. That's why. I, oh, me. you if they if you let them out, they jump on me? Well, they'll, they'll be annoying for a bit, and I just didn't want it. They've been out all day. I mean, the, Andy the, looks at me like, like would the you couple just times like keep I've going been to your like, house, the dogs are like, I'm worried well, that you're they, like, they get annoying that you don't give people. them any exercise. <laughs> Do they look fat? Hell no. These dogs have the best life in the world. Are you kidding me? The best life. We yeah. rescued them. Get dude. a fence. We, you can't. In that subdivision, I'm you on can the course. You a pool. Get a pool? I don't have 200 grand to spend. I got other things I have to do on that house, man. It costs a lot of money. You think you a know? pool is a good investment? For your soul. Oh. 
I don't know. You'd be spending money it's off a the lot wazoo. Of, it's a lot of money because you got a lot of. It's like every people who I who who I know that have pools, they're always having to spend drop two grand totally. here, four grand here. Of course, on just like having a boat, something. just like having I, a I, cabin. I, I got a crack just in like the pipe. A, I got a crack in this. Yeah, or like you know, just it's yeah. just nonstop. But just like having a boat, just like having a lake house, anything you have, you're gonna have to spend money. Are and, boats and invest money dangerous? Into. If you're an idiot, can I ask one other question? Yeah. on the submersible. Yeah. And it's a dumb question, but uh, it's okay. is there an engine? Like, how is it? It's remote. Is it a motor? There's a yeah. There's a motor that the the mothership uses, and who's controlling a, it? The guy, the captain of the you could you could have a little controller. Like was the captain that guy, the Ocean Gate guy? Uh, no, he was the CEO. The other captain. There's another captain there with the remote. Anybody could. There's guys that went down there. Tourists like here. They gave the remote and here. I could drive it. So but it's he, a didn't, little Xbox he didn't remote. want experienced people to re- captain his. He didn't want fifty-year-old white guys from the military, apparently, which is just the stupidest fucking thing in the world. But it's okay. Okay, so it's you can okay. hire people to do that. Yeah, yeah, Andy. Okay, I, I, I would never. I am not an adventurous. I don't even want to go into a. We, uh, we heard you when you said. Yeah, that. I wouldn't even want to go into a uh, hot air balloon. Hell no. <laughs> Catch on fire. Yeah, actually, my my agent uh, back in the day gave us. Kate and I a hot air balloon thing for our went or anniversary or something. I don't even like going. We didn't even go. I don't even like going on roller coasters. Yeah, I've seen stories where people's hair get caught on a roller coaster and just rips their entire hair yeah. off. There's worse stories than that, Andy. No, like rips the, their entire the hair just completely. How about the kid? How about off. the kid from St. Louis that went down to Florida? I know. And went on that ride, and he was I he know. was 120 pounds overweight, and the overweight uh, yes, and the Hoosier dipshit controlling it didn't lock him. The, Lock him, strap him down because it's too big, and they let him go up there. And it was one of those things that you go all the way up, and it drops. He went all the way up, fell right out of it. Wasn't Boom. he a big time football player? Yeah, he's a football player. Oh, they're I suing don't think this he shit. He was out. 120 pounds overweight. He was gigantic, and he was way overweight yeah, but for that. that thing. That's like, and he's a football player. I'm sure he has some agility and some <laughs> athletic ability. Probably had uh, some first form too, maybe. You know, first form is hey, if you're 120 pounds overweight and you're listening to this, you is there are people like that. I know. Let me tell you this right now. You can get your life back on track by downloading that app from First Form. You can get your life on track by downloading that app from First Form. Like if, I, like if I was doing like a public speaking, motivational speaking seminar right now, I'd look at everybody and be like, you can get your life back on track by one simple step. You download that app. <clears throat> oh, you got them. You got them going. But it is true. It is true. Like, it's a simple thing to do, and they will guide you. They mm. will guide you through the and process. you get the it's bars not a one step and the thing. protein. And don't listen to Andy. It's not a one-step thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time, but they will guide you the right way, yeah. first form. Do you know that I met a guy at Summer Smash 2023? I talked to a lot of people there, actually, but we were at Summer Smash. I talked to a number of people there. One guy had lost over 100 pounds. Yeah, I've seen that. Talk to people like that, too. Yeah. It's amazing that he was able to, to do that. But you can do that, too. Get that app and do it today. Start the workout process and allow your first form contact to kind of be your life coach and guide you the way. Guide you the way. Damn right. Public speaking. If you want to hire me for anything, to come out. No, if you want me to come. No, if you want me to come. This is what people bitch about. If you want me to Drag come. Drag an ass no, at the want, end. If you want me. They to, don't want to hear. If you want me to come. You just talk to you about speak. yourself. They if don't care. If you want me to come speak to your company. They don't care. Um, people in Saskatchewan don't give a shit. What do they call it when companies get together? Don't care. On a, uh, I don't care. On like a vacation type thing. What do they call that? When companies. I don't know. Yeah, like a team building yeah. process. If you need me to come there, I, I, I will be there right away. I'm just not taking like it. It's just just don't ask me to do anything like adventurous. Like I'll hike and stuff like that all day long. I'll climb mountains. I'll do all that. I'm just not you know doing anything crazy, like going in a submersible. Dude, you already talked about that. That's not happening. We know that you're not adventurous. First form. You're not fucking Shackleton slash Cam and Strick. You're not James Cameron. Hey, if you're gonna buy anything from First Form Cam, use our link though, right? Yep. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Do that today. Of course, test on roofing and testonroofing.com. I've told you about the greener shingles. Again, testonroofing.com. Your shingles right now on your roof, they have dried out brittle essential oils that are no longer supplying the necessary nutrients to your roof. They've dried out. You need that greener shingles. You need to do it today. If you need a new roof or any style of roof you're looking for, commercial buildings, Spanish-style roofs, Cam. 
You know those Spanish tiles yeah. you can Damn get? right. They can do all of that. Like the orangey type. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, they can do all of that. Tess on Roofing. Tess on Roofing.com. Uh, call my guy, my, my good buddy, Brett Tesson, today. Just check their website. Great guy. Out, Tesson. Works his ass off for you. Yes, he does. Works his ass off for you. Yes, he does. Bellman and Bellman.com, Cam. At Bellman, you get no what? Swing and dicks. Well, they got a lot of stuff there for you. Thank Chrysler, you. Dodge, Jeep, Ram on one side of the street. Buick GMC on the other side. Danny Bellman, the OG. He believed in us before anybody else Yeah, he did. did. Damn. Damn right he is. He's our OG sponsor. Let's talk to him for a second. Danny, what's up, homie? We love you. Kenny. Daryl. <laughs> Daryl. Where are they located? <laughs> Try Troy, Missouri, because I don't want to fuck that up. Get out there. It's a Troy, Missouri. Today. Yeah. Check hey, listen, them out. Everybody have a, a great week. Enjoy the draft. Everything else that comes with it. Love you guys. We'll have full reaction of the first couple of days of free agency coming up on the next edition. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything. Yep. And uh, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest happenings and certainly some instant analysis and reaction as well. Camastrick.com. If you missed any previous episodes, check that out. we got hats for sale. I hope everyone's having a great summer. Get on that Love boat, you kick your feet up, yep. and chill. Send hope you pictures. enjoy Jim on this edition of the Camastrick Podcast. See you, dudes. See you, everybody.